you're watching Suck Professor. Hello, everybody. It's me, Hank. I'm joined by... James. James! Oh, man. Season finale. Game of Thrones, episode 7. Right? Yes. Season 7, episode 7 finale. We just finished watching it. It was an extra long episode, so we're going to... It was, what, an hour and 20 minutes? So About I, an hour and a half or so. so I think we're going to talk for at least four or five hours. That's the way the math works out around here. Uh, what an exciting episode. James, were, were you thrilled? A lot of my theories were disproven, but I'm okay with that. Oh, pfft. I'm not okay with it, but I can't wait to talk about it in more detail later on. So, yeah, guys, this is kind of like a long podcast discussion thing in case you're looking for uh, Smithsonian quality analysis. <laughs> you're not going to get it here. But, uh, all right, man, I'm, I'm too excited, James. we got to get going. Let's get going. Qu quit holding us back, all right? Jesus Christ. You've done for that wildfire. You've been, have you been feeding the tree? Are you feeding the tree wildfire? Maybe. Jesus, the weirwood wide web is going to be glitchy from for a little while now. Fuck! All right, here we go. Okay, uh, well, uh, there's the Citadel for some reason. <laughs> and then, okay, opening shot. Uh, we, we, we figured out this is the Unsullied, right? right? And there's something about this confused me, because the last time we saw the Unsullied, they were invading Casterly Rock, which turned out they were one step behind the Lannisters, because the Lannisters abandoned Casterly Rock in order to trap them there, yeah. essentially, by destroying their fleet behind them so that they couldn't escape. Therefore, cutting the head off the snake of Daenerys' army. Right. So we know they had a long way to march to get back to reunite with the army, and it's not really clear how much time has passed, but it does seem as though they have managed keep, keep talking, keep to talking. Uh, actually traverse the distance needed to reunite. All right. Well, you know, I, I, yeah, I think there's a valid point you're making. Uh, so I just pulled up a map here. Casterly Rock is over here on this side of, the, uh, of Westeros, and here's King's Landing all the way over here. So that is a long way to go. But I guess it's plausible. We don't know how much time has gone by. Maybe they made the, the journey. These are the Unsullied, by the way. When you're not carrying around all those penises, you're, you move a lot more efficient. I don't know about me, but I trip on mine all the time. <laughs> I have a genetic condition. It's terrible. I get stuck in doors all the time. It's terrible. My doctor... My, my, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was going to make a joke about poking my doctor in the eye. All right, well, what's your comment, James? Well, what we do know is that the original plan was that the Tyrells were going to form a blockade along with... Uh, help from the Dornish right. in order to lay siege to King's Landing instead of sending the Dothraki straight in because they would be seen as foreign invaders. So they right. had a good plan. So now if we go back to the, the scene... Oh, you want to go back here now? Yeah, yeah. All right. We find out where they actually are. Yeah, okay, right. So obviously with Grey Worm, everybody likes Grey Worm. He's good at that thing with his tongue. And then, then we've got more, more of his fellas, the camera. We show a bunch of the Zuncelli. They look like they've reorganized, regrouped a little bit. And here they are at... Although it was kind of hard to tell from just from this shot alone. I don't yeah. I mean, props to anybody that knew that this was, turns out to be King's Landing. Well, that looks to be Jamie Lannister atop the... Right there. Yeah. Yeah. And we know Jamie Lannister would not be in Casterly Rock. There's only the one of... <laughs> there's only yeah. one other place they would be, and that would be King's Landing. All right. That's right. You sound like you had a squirrel in your... I did, <laughs> yes. I filmed a squirrel in slow motion the other day. It ran away. That's great. Um, but yeah, so this confirms King's Landing, though, when, when I saw that. You, but you're right. By deduction, it would... Because Jamie was there, but... So yeah, they showed up. Now they they made it. I don't know. Yeah. So you're just saying it seems weird that they, they got that far? Yeah, it seems like they're trying to get the story done as quickly as possible. We know this is the last episode of Season 7. Season 8 is the final season. It's going to be a short season. they got to move quickly. They have to compress time. So it yeah. kind of makes sense. I, it's one of the most common complaints about Game of Thrones is all the time warping that seems to happen. This doesn't seem like one of the more egregious examples. There's been ones where, like, Daenerys shows up at a Taco Bell on, in South America and fucking next day she's in uh, Russia my, having Taco yeah. Bell. My favorite fan theory was on Reddit years ago saying that you know how Peter Baelish, Littlefinger, always got around so quickly? Yeah. They say that because he was the, the commander of the Vale, or the, I'm not the Vale, of, of the Eyrie, and it was up on high ground that he would jump off the top and use his suit as a wingsuit and fly around Westeros. Oh, I believe that. That makes perfect yes. sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I, would. I, um, I would love that to be true, so, but I know that's total but ridiculousness. Just final thing, and then we'll, we'll keep pushing. That is complete nonsense. I know. I know <laughs> they, you know, hey, where's those uh, squirrel suits? Those, I love like, skydiving suits. Fun nonsense is my favorite nonsense. Oh, that's why you like me so much. Yes. Um, well, you, now that you agreed, I felt way more intimacy <laughs> than I was expecting. I'm not prepared for this. Um, <laughs> So, uh, oh, the final thing. Um, this That complaint about the time warp stuff is one of the things the audience is asked to suspend their disbelief about. And I am forgiving of it. I see the constraints that they would have. If they were just a show like, 
a bunch of dudes getting dysentery over like a four week march and then just like uh you know like fuck the supplies just running out uh, then we get they get you know, i'm not you know what i'm saying like well they just get to the point just get to the part where they're talking and fighting that's pretty much what no, the show the needs to be criticism about. last episode was that there's no way that they could have sent a raven from the north to get all the way back to dragonstone to get nearest to get on a dragon to fly all the way to the north while right. they waited for the water to freeze and all that kind of stuff. But someone, I, I don't know if it was on Reddit, if it was in a video or something, but they showed the map, and they showed the logistics of it, and it didn't seem that far-fetched at all. Right. Yeah. It seemed like two to three days for the Sparrow to get there, to get for Daenerys to fly to the north would have taken at, like two days at the very yeah. most for the water to freeze back over. It, and how do we know the dragon doesn't do a move where he turns around and propels flames out of his mouth and then he flies like a squid? You know, a squid, they, they, yes, they can yes. either move around their arms or they can like do the real jet blast out of water. Maybe that's how Drogon likes to fly when he's doing long, like, you know, Concord style. Yeah, I, I don't think he can invert his wings. Fuck or... it. Put it on Reddit, okay? It becomes everything that you put on Reddit is true, so let's mm. make it happen. All right, so there we go. Now we got a guys, they're, they're filling oil, they're doing war, war, war preps and, you know, lots of commotion. Bron is uh, surveying what's going on here. Um, you know, how, how many barrels? 500, my lord. Get to, get to 500 more. So he's ready. He's you a know. pirate now? Yar. <laughs> Actually, Yar. Perfect name. Yara. Get yep. it? Pirate. Come mm -hmm. on, George Martin. He's got like bad horse you. blinders on. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, these are his things. So you think like a light wind would like hit him in his face. And just, <laughs> They'd just be flapping open and yeah. shut constantly. They keep away just large mosquitoes. <laughs> like shutters in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> clank, 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 clank. Yeah, it must be annoying. It's, but it's hard to shave. You know, when he's wearing his helmet. Uh, all right, so anyway, yeah, all right, 500 more. We'll get right here. Okay, so, oh, look at this little bridge. I don't know why that's cute. Isn't that kind of cute? They should have made that out of stone, too, because that can break more easily. Yeah, like, what the fuck? Couldn't you, could you have put a more of a weak spot? <laughs> yeah, you think you'd want that to be your strong spot. Uh, I mean, maybe they added this piece and they didn't think of, I don't know, I just feel like, uh, okay. Well, there's probably reasons. I'm not an architect. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I have looked at room porn a little bit on Tumblr. Mm. I don't mean porn, James. I mean room porn. You know, like rich people's houses? Mm. Oh, my God. It makes me want to get a job. All right. I still enjoy it when they call me. Oh, yeah. So this is him talking, you know, basic, because one of the guys called him a lord. Yeah, he's so basically we, giving commands to the Lannisters while they face the threat of the impending siege. Right, right. And they... um. They're surveying, yes, yeah, so what's coming up. But they have the, the kind of classic Jamie Braun banter. They always sort of have a little antagonism, but it's yeah. sort of a brotherly affection, and this if is anything. Apparently the part where a big discussion goes on as to why they fight if they're missing a key part of their anatomy. Oh, yeah, with the cocks. Yes. That's right, we got to say the word cocks a whole bunch. Um, yeah, chosen to decide. He's talking about how they all don't have dicks. Now, uh, that is realistic. Men are obsessed with other guys' penises. Believe me, I've been obsessing I over dicks since I was a baby. don't think that's what he was getting at. Well, no, I don't I mean I think he was saying way. that the intentions of men are largely driven by their romantic impulses. In some ways, their lust for gold. But then Jamie, even Jamie was like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm skipping around. Why am I using No, Bron is saying that, and what do you think men do with gold? Well, they buy affection. They buy, uh, yes, affection. <laughs> I'm an, trying to sugarcoat it. That's such an innocent way of saying yes. buying some tang. They go to the brothels. Call it tang, James, just like the astronauts. Mm -hmm. um, no, yes, I know. It, it is, uh, um, but that comes down to penis uh, motivations. Uh, I'm Look, the reason men are obsessed with penises is because our society uh, denotes some sort of status onto the functioning slash sizing of these things and they are just tubes of flesh that are used for peeing and then the second purpose is for reproduction when the third purpose is for taking photos it seems as though you're implying that men are obsessed with the wings of other men when in reality men are only obsessed with their own wings I, and the I needs disagree. of their own wings. if you ever played a sport the plenty of uh no it's because it's not hold on it's oversimplifying it here and this is this is obviously important that we should keep keep on this at topic. this rate will <laughs> never be done i'm saying men only care about their own wing in relative in relation to other men's it's it's the status factor is what i'm talking about uh big dick little dick it's it's always relative to other penises that's the point that's the whole notion and the notion that size matters because women give a shit is true. Women give a shit because biggers give her give women a little bit more. In general, these are all generalizations. Okay, it's I, not the size of the ocean; it's the motion of the boats. Okay. I don't. I have not spent much, if any, of my life thinking of such things. But let's move on. Well, I I have. I'm very insecure about my huge penis. <laughs> says that okay all right sorry everybody you can unsubscribe i understand i get it i, I wish i could unsubscribe from me believe me it's a fucking, oh god 
I think it's getting worse, James, honestly. It's, uh, so, I anyway. fire my therapist. All right. <laughs> You're talking about Tyrion. Oh, yeah, so uh, the champion... Uh, all right, you go ahead. They're basically saying that Tyrion is now leading the armies against him in an effort to destroy his family and to usurp mm -hmm. the throne from his sister, Cersei. Right. And he's saying that Tyrion has always been a champion of the downtrodden. That's right. And now they... the important thing is is that they see behind the Dothraki, I mean behind the Unsully, the Dothraki are marching in. Those are horse horse hoofs. Yes. Yeah. And who better than Jamie and Bronn would know the destructive capabilities of the Dothraki? They met them in an open field in battle like two episodes ago during the spoils of war. Right. So they know that they're facing a threat that they cannot defeat. Yeah. Yeah. Although Jamie and Bronn would have seen them way up here when Yeah, they, they would have. <laughs> well, the problem is they're I... Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. Back then, the draw distances weren't that good. <laughs> the draw distance, that's hilarious. Uh, yes, no, and they can they, they see the Dothraki show up, and I don't think they're surprised either. They know these guys are around. So this is this is bad news for the uh, for the uh, for the Lannisters. However, I said, well, what are they going to do? Attack the walls? Come on, horses versus walls. It's pretty obvious who's going to win that one. You ever play Age of Empires? The walls catch on fire after a few minutes. Even, with, then... even with horse attacks? Yes, horse attacks. <laughs> you can throw <laughs> rocks at the wall, and the wall will eventually start crumbling and catching on fire. And turn to fire? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, fine. This is a wooden... This is a, not a wooden... What's the opposite of wood? Stone. This is a stone... What, what is the opposite of wood? Leafs? A leaf? <laughs> a leaf is made of tree material. Oh, yeah, tree material. All right, which is... Okay, okay, then we see uh, the bay, and we got a bunch of boats. This, this is... would be Blackwater Bay, I would think. I right? think so, yeah. Unless Blackwater Bay starts over here or something. Um... <laughs> There's little buoys to denote where it starts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they have no wake zone. You know, <laughs> slow down. Yeah, whoa. Hey, I'm going to call the Coast Guard. <laughs> um, It'd be great if there's the guy on a jet ski going through them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zoom, they forgot to Photoshop it out. They don't Photoshop video, I know. Yeah. But, um, all right, so uh, Euron, that's Euron with his um, big boat, Euron Duty, right? Euron, Euron! Yeah. Your Honor, yes. judge, judge Duty. So the thing we should all be aware of by now is that in the last episode, oh, a I lot missed, of... Sorry, let me just explain real fast. There was Then the camera moves over and there's a shot of like five boats. So imagine five boats. All right, go ahead, no, James. That's yeah. these guys. All right, so in the, in the prior episode, a lot of messages went out. One went to Winterfell, to Sansa... One went to, I think, Daenerys and so forth. But basically, it was Cersei sending out letters of invitation to meet at King's Landing to discuss terms. Yeah. So this is it. This is a huge meeting of characters who have not, who either have never met before or who have not seen each other in a very long time. But they all have one thing in common, and that thing in common is that they absolutely despise one another. That's right. And this has been dubbed, as everybody on the internet is calling it, Cersei Bowl. I don't, right? I have not heard anyone call it that. <laughs> it's the fucking Cersei Bowl. There's Klee well, Game Bowl. There'll, there'll be There's more. There's no Cersei Bowl. There's but... a big Cersei Bowl going on. It's all this deception. It's all these evil lies. Are you referring to her haircut? And the, No, I like her haircut. I, if I had hair, that's the haircut I would have. All right? And the same color, too. Actually, no. Mine was like more... I, mine was more Targaryen. I had like really bright white blonde hair when I was a little kid. Maybe it's it just so bright we can't see it. And it turned fucking yellow after puberty kicked in. <laughs> it's not invisible hair, James. You want to touch it? No, I, I, I actually don't. <laughs> It's fun to touch. It feels like you're touching some sort of weird, fucked up fur. All right. Um, oh, yeah. So John learns that there's a million, give or take. And he goes, wow, that's so many people live in the north, just all over the north. Because recall, the, the only time that John was ever at, actually, he never went to King's Landing. He, oh, was, he was actually at Winterfell when Robert Baratheon and Cersei rolled in in episode one, offering the hand of the king to their father, Ned Stark, for him to accompany them back to King's Landing. Right. And I know Sansa went, I knew Arya went. Benjen was there? Yeah, but I don't think that John went. No, John turned north. The last time he saw his dad was uh, where his dad went uh, one way and he went the other way yes. to go north. So this is his With first time to see it, which yeah. is why he's uh, kind of amazed by it. Kind of like, a, like he's like a hayseed coming in from the rural area mm -hmm. looking at yeah. New York City going, oh my God, how are they making that building so tall? They go, that's a church. <laughs> they, they go real much taller. Look up. Oh my Oh my! Progressively getting more surprised mm -hmm. by big buildings, James. Come on, come on, Saturday Night Live. All right, <laughs> and the brothels are, are brothels are far superior. So he's just reminiscing about all the whores he's banged. And uh, you know about the, they miss him. Oh, fuck. Double click. God damn it! I double click. But essentially, what John was saying is, why would people choose to live in such conditions where they're crammed together in such a small place? And Tyrion gives two reasons. He says, one, there are much greater job opportunities and second the brothels are far superior right more work and better tang well when you need a job to pay for it that's, that's right okay so now we're in the hold right isn't that what with the call? hound yes with the, with the, when they call the ship uh, storage rooms and stuff yeah yeah the cargo bay cargo the, bay you want to call it yeah what are you going to star trek there come on yes it's my thing it's, it's, it's the hangar thing. i can talk about star trek not you yes shut the fuck up set your phasers to quiet i told you 
Uh, <laughs> oh, what's, that, what's that fuck? Farscape or nothing else, okay? <laughs> okay. That's your, I'm Star Trek guy. All right, so the white... Okay, so he, he taps on it. He goes, he knocks on it. He goes... And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Are you just bored? He's checking to see if he's alive. Well, checking to see if he's still dead. This is like a chef <laughs> making sure that the roast beef is still... You, you know, yeah. Basically, a more accurate term, checking to see if he's still kicking. Still kicking. All right, fine. Alive and dead maybe aren't words we should be using other than yep. maybe dead. But they're trying to kill him again, so that's really not... They're not trying not, to kill him. Well, they're going to... No, they're all of the whites. I mean, not this oh, one. Yeah. And they knew he was there killing him. He's had a death sentence. He's going to be... You don't murdered. know that. He might what do you sit think? The, they're going to give him a job? By the end of the episode, he might sit on the Iron Throne. You don't know that. Put him in a French nurse outfit and yeah. make, her, make her one of those cleaning ladies that yeah. has this, wears lingerie. They should, they give like him a small little, wonder. Let's go. A bag of coins, send him to a brothel. Maybe it might bring him back. <laughs> he comes back. <laughs> I'm all bones. I'm all boners. <laughs> they love me. <laughs> he becomes a brothel guy. That's the word. All right, so then, uh, anyway, so it starts kicking around like it's a zombie. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so, like it's a zombie. But he knows that some, he's up to something here, and he's sort of taken on his job, seems to be kind of keeper of the white. Well, I think it's just a Which reminder also, of the purpose of their trip. Yeah, yeah, but as we see later, he's more involved with this. It's like, it's like if you have a couple, if you have me and my brothers, one of us gets to be in charge of the of the, the bait or some shit. Or, oh, yeah, yeah I'm like... I'm the guy who's going to be in charge of the uh, raccoon food. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's the most significant part of it. It's no, just that they all. are bringing this white to King's Landing to show the people of King's Landing, namely Cersei and her yes. cahoots, that the real threat is coming from the north. Because right. otherwise they would have no incentive to believe them if they didn't have solid evidence to show. For sure. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. And uh, Cersei's asking something for Quyburn, and he doesn't, I don't know what he's fucking, he's answering a question. <laughs> Do you remember? I don't remember. Uh, maybe the next one. Uh, no no one's one, seen it. Oh, she, he asked if Daenerys is amongst them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so they don't... And, yeah. and then the brother's there. So we get a lot of that. Uh, oh, yeah. So as she leaves, she she, she gives the mountain kill the silver-haired bitch first. I hope I got the rest of them. Yeah. Then our brother, then the bastard who calls himself king. I like that. And she goes, kill everybody else, however you feel like At it. your own discretion right. afterwards. Yeah. Yes. That was kind of funny. So, you know, she's, she's um, you know, she wants to make sure that if it gets ugly, she's going to get people killed that, yeah, that deserve, just, that she thinks deserve to die. This is a reminder that she has not had a warming of her heart anytime recently. No, no. It would be weird if she had what she had. She doesn't have Twitter. She can't watch videos of dogs swimming with, you know, cats and stuff. This is, you know, heartwarming, you know, unlikely animal friendships. That's on Twitter? Yeah, that's right. People share posts on Twitter all the time. This, mm. the one, this one dog was trying to catch a frisbee, but then he misses the frisbee and he hits the guy holding the camera. It's beautiful. It's in slow motion. It's really one. It's really mm. lovely. All right, so uh, Donkey Brang. I didn't know that they called them Brang. I didn't yep. know they were That's religious. how they worship. Yeah. We, you, you, you stepped on my joke with the exact same joke, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> um, but they explain that they're going to this this area that's like a dragon pit, they call it, right? But yes. it's sort of where they kept the dragons when the Targaryens were running the show. Pretty far away, though. They're out in the hills a little bit here. That's, that's the... No, you know. was it where they kept the dragons from the Targaryens? But the, I, think I, I guess they do, because they said Belarion or Belarion the Great was kept there. But afterwards, yeah. after the end of the reign of the Targaryens, they kept all the dragons there and enclosed them in. And that's why they grew no larger than the size of a chicken. I think that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is their attempt to, like, zoo the dragons. Yes. To use zoo as a verb, which it's not a verb. Yeah. But it works for me. I'll allow it. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> you sure you don't want to touch my head? That's all right. The sides are a little heavy. Where all the hair is still thick. <laughs> the top is where it's missing. Okay. I have, you know, some people have touched it and said it's kind of fun. If you could just like rotate your head upside down, it would be more normal. You mean switch my beard for yeah. my? Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe you're making fun of somebody with a disability. <laughs> all right, your friends arrived before we. Okay, so they're talking about. Uh, yeah, these two here. Um, that's Bron Tyler. So Brienne and uh, the Hound have a nice little moment, right? Did, yep. I, did I miss that? Uh, that's coming up. Oh, well, yeah, they have a couple. But they, they kind of look at each other real quick. Because there. the last time Brienne and the Hound met She was... kicked his ass. Yes, she when... did. And left him for dead. Yeah. Um, well, knocked him off the cliff and didn't and assumed he had died. Well, she, did, left him for dead. she didn't go down there and check to see his well-being or right. confirm his death. But that is, well, I would say that qualifies. Nor does she send medics or anyone along right. the way, maesters. Sure. Yeah, she didn't do that. So anyway, um, okay, so we're having a nice meeting here. A bunch of characters have never interacted before, so it's a lot to keep track of. Even or in some that have interacted before, but just not in a long time, namely right. Tyrion and Podrick. Mm-hmm. Buddies. They, they seem to have a nice affection he for, was for them. He Tyrion Squire for a time. Yeah, yeah. Tyrion paid for him to go to the whorehouse. Yes, where and he then, became very popular. And came back with the money still, and then they mm -hmm. listened to him and Bronn wanted to to hear the story. That was a fun moment. And Bronn was his sellsword who fought for him in trial by combat at the Aerie which was very important for Tyrion, and right. he, you know, had him be his... So almost like his hand to a, an assort. 
is Han- Bronn was. Yes. Right, well, yeah, yeah, Tyrion met Bronn originally, as you just described. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and, and Tyrion, or Bronn did serve that function for Tyrion. And uh, he's a reliable guy, and that's why he's in, under the employ of Jaime. Mm-hmm. Bronn right. typically goes to whoever offers the most coin, though. Right. So yeah. that's how he lost the employ of Tyrion in favor of Jaime and Cersei. So I can't get him to work for me, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, so then uh, these two have a little conversation. I thought this was kind of nice that they, they had a sort of respectful... Uh, like, you know, like he didn't try to hit. I was worried he would go after her or something. He's a different man, though. We we know this. Yeah, he's definitely changed. Uh, he's 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 uh, maybe found. Would you say he's found God? I wouldn't. I, quite. I think he's found humanity. The preacher anything. guy helped him find humanity because that's who rescued him. Deadwood, the Deadwood guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he's also hung out with the Lord of Light dudes, the Beric Dondarrion, the Brotherhood the of brother, Banners, Brotherhood without Banner guys and then he saw into the fire and then he went north so he's had a little bit of maybe done a little rethinking he's yeah. still a violent murderous killer though. well yeah but he he has a lot more sympathy and empathy for those around him now he has right. a regret for what he's done in the past and who he was in the past and he doesn't have any desire to repeat those mistakes seems like it and at least we can say that his he doesn't have a grudge against brienne if anything i'd say he has respect for her right and he knows that she was tasked by catelyn stark to be the ward over both uh stark children right. being uh the, the daughters the daughters uh, Arya and sansa and, yeah. and she is now informing the hound that Arya still lives mm-hmm. and where is she in winterfell now he's surprised or he's kind of uh like he seems relieved. He seems like, yeah. oh, good. I'm glad she's still good. Good, good. Because he's sort of like as know, much as still allow it. Well, sure. Yeah. She, you know, she's like the daughter he kidnapped and then tried to sell yeah. multiple places and helped get most of he, her family murdered. He tried very hard to pretend like he didn't care for her, but he did. He, did he was a to protector care. to her. He wanted to see no harm come to her. Right. Right. Now here's the question, though. Since Arya walked away without killing him, remember he was begging mm-hmm. her to kill him, and right. then he she actually saved his life by walking away. But she thought she was killing him by walking away. Uh, when Arya finally finds out he's still alive, is she going to kill the Hound? I I don't think so. Mm, Arya's a psycho. She's I mean, a she, fucking psycho. She did continuously list his name as part of her list. One of the first names, too. Yeah, but I don't think that she would wish harm upon him. I think that she, even she realizes that he was a big architect in where she is right now. Okay, so the only way that would be true, what you're saying, is if she had the emotional experience of killing him, when she walked away from him, because that's what she thought she was doing, was killing him by not helping him. Baron, so, so hold on, just in the sense that maybe she's buried that or crossed that name off the list that in you know emotionally for her that she, he hasn't been on her list and since that time, uh, maybe then she's moved on to the point where if she sees he's alive, she'll be okay with him being alive. But she's a nutcase and she's going to see him and she's going to poke him in the chest with needle. But the thing is, is that pure vengeance is no longer her sole motivation because we saw that when she met the, the group of Lannister boys, namely Ed Shireen, uh-huh. uh, she was heading to King's Landing for the sole purpose of assassinating Cersei. She had all the tools that she needed to do. She had her training. She had her ruthlessness. She had her bag of faces. Mm-hmm. She could have done it probably. probably. But she chose to turn back to... Uh, abandon the life of the lone wolf to rejoin her pack when she heard that her family was in Winterfell. Yeah. Which means that she can make rational, thoughtful decisions. She does, She's not this this bloodlusting creature anymore that she used to be back when she was, you know, yeah. contemplating getting revenge for the murder of her family at the Red Wedding. I hear you. I think those are good points. I still think that she could uh, calculate her murder. She can kill him with calculation, not with just pure like as soon as she sees him she turns into a maniac which i kind of implied she would do first but i think she'd still want to kill him is my point yeah all right we could we could debate it more later unless you want to well i think that as she has grown older as she has learned the ways of the world and as she's gone through the trials and tribulations that she has gone through i think she can look back on and reflect and see that the hound was not an adversary for her Mm. she can probably tell that he was trying to do what was good for her that she just couldn't see at the time because she was so blinded by her rage for vengeance Mm. I did that noise twice for some reason. Uh, I think justice is more her motivator than than rage for vengeance. We shall see. Vengeance it. and justice are like one of them you do screaming, and the other one you do with a bunch of paperwork. That's what stuff. I call my two biceps. Vengeance and justice. Yes. Yeah, I call mine gun number one and pistol Pete. Yeah. All right. Um, I have no biceps, by the way. You don't? No. Oh. I was born without them. No, oh, you poor thing. No wonder. No wonder your arms never bend. James <laughs> James's elbows. <laughs> He's got great triceps, though. You should see those things. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, I, don't think, I don't think I'm anyone's lord. Okay, so Podrick is trying to, like, get... Still calls to, him lord. Yeah, you've been thinking about our new queen. So they're... Uh, Bronn and, Bron and uh, Tyrion... The point of this conversation here... I'll probably get this wrong. 
is that Bran is base Tyrion is basically saying, "Oh, your so your allegiances are flexible. You you can be bought." Basically saying that, right? Well, he he tells Bran, "You're only looking out for yourself." Yeah, he tells Bran that whatever they're paying you, I'll pay you double. My offer still stands. Make sure that you're looking out for yourself. And he's like, "Well, of course I'm looking out for myself. I'm not looking out for you. I'm marching in two traitors that Cersei has offered bags of gold for the heads of straight through their door without her having to lift a finger. Of course, what more could I be doing than looking out for myself by delivering you to her?" Right. And then she would be grateful. So this is like Tyrion is basically trying to say, if you really cared about yourself, you'd be with us. And then Bronn is saying, no, dumbass, I can get a lot out of this too, dummy. But at the very end, he says, it's good to see you again. And he goes, yeah, you too. Yeah. Because it basically says that on the outside, here's my bravado. Here's me saying I'm doing this for my own self-interest. But in reality, they do still have a kinship. They still do care for one another, despite the outward appearance they have to maintain. Totally. And they've both always been very straight. And, and Bronn is similarly... Uh, not betrothed. He treats Jamie with the same thing, where they're very upfront about their incentives and motivations. And so they mm -hmm. almost respect each other for their honesty about being kind of conniving, self interested jerks. But they do have a, a genuine affection for them, for each other. All right. So speaking of affection, uh, he's got a horse. Is that a, I think that's a donkey. I'm going donkey on that one because of the ears. Is that a donkey, James? That could have been the donkey that was brain earlier. Brain donkey. Oh, yeah. It was. It is a donkey. I'm. I'm almost positive it's a donkey. It looks a lot like the Shrek donkey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Shrek. <laughs> wow. Um, is that a good impression? <laughs> Not at all. Oh, well, I, don't know. I, only, I only saw that. Movie. <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. Half of that movie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um. <laughs> what? That's not good. Just that. It's in that Eddie Murphy plays that game. Yeah. That's yeah. A... All right. So anyway, I was very proud that I thought that was a donkey, and then James <laughs> confirmed it was a donkey. Um, so I'm feeling good about that. But that's uh, it sounds it, more like Cookie Monster. <laughs> C is for Cookie. <laughs> Cookies are for sometimes. That's actually pretty good though. Um, give you that. Every man can do that fucking voice. It's not impressive at all. Uh, anyway, okay, sorry. So uh, it's got the white. That's what they've got on the back. They got a big UPS package here. They're DHL from uh, from every FedEx. And, and I was speculating so coming to this place was pretty cool about the white. I, I don't know if we were speculating about this on the recording or if we were just talking about in the living room or amongst ourselves, but I was worried that the white was going to thaw out or lose its Wi-Fi connection to the Night King and become just a, a stinking rotted right. corpse. So they would just show up. And they'd say, <laughs> look what we have brought for you, proof of the dead. And then the, this little corpse just falls out. This, is, this sad little broken-ass yeah. corpse. Comes All the down. effort for nothing. They just dug up a grave so I was old guy. I was, wor I was genuinely worried about this, it, though. It seemed like that could have been a thing. Um, yes, and as we'll see more, we'll talk more about that. I just want to point out, this is a bowl. Cersei's going to be here. Cersei bowl. Okay, fuck face. It does kind of look like a Chipotle burrito bowl. It, it, it totally does, right? Can't it just needs the, the dome on the top. A bed of lettuce and a bunch yep. of uh, corn and the, stuff. Cr the cr crumpled aluminum. I always get edges. extra sour cream, hold the lettuce, hold all the other ingredients. But I'm glad we're on this uh, shot right here oh, because okay. it looks to be a ruin of what it once was. Back when Balerion, the great dragon of the Targaryens, may have been kept here. Mm -hmm. They said that they kept the dragons here because it was a lot easier to have, have them isolated to one spot than to be roaming the countryside out of control. Right. So it looks like this is a coliseum this is some sort of ancient ruin which probably was built up a lot more than what we see it right now they were probably chained down below or they were chained in this like central area could and be. maybe when they're unchained they could fly up through a roof area but it does look like a a, a a shadow of what it used to be yes it's obviously clearly run down that's why it looks like a kfc built in the 80s and you think that the stone there does that look melted to you from dragon fire perhaps maybe no. they rebelled and got out at some i'm point? not getting that vibe yet it just looks like erosion it's not heron hall which is the melted castle. Yes. Um, I mean, it's a little darker, maybe there's something to that, or I don't know. But, but why is it the one I, spot... Look like Mr. Wizard? Yeah, the one spot where they put all the fancy seats is pretty much pristine. Well, I was going to say, this looks like this is new. They yeah. built this platform to cover over this basement access, mm -hmm. and they put doors, and there's obviously you know rooms and stuff underneath. I don't know. This looks... I mean, it still serves a purpose as a you know, function, you know, just a... You know, every once in a while, the circus shows up, and a bunch of companies yeah. come out and try to, have, try to sell meth to your girlfriend. All right, so uh, here they come. Uh, there's uh, some people sitting around. And Missandei, my fave. I love her. I want her to be my wife. The hound. The hound, my and other it, fave. I'd like him to be my husband. And it's also significant that the hound and Podrick are coming back to King's Landing because Podrick was from King's Landing. He, mm -hmm. he served in the court. Uh, the hound was a, a protector of the king under Joffrey, yeah. who basically uh, escaped during the Battle of Blackwater, who was seen around the countryside proclaiming F the king and killing off Lannister soldiers and those, you know, 
I, I loyal to Joffrey. That's right. So he's taking a big risk coming back here. Everybody's taking a risk coming a back. A lot, here. pretty yeah. much, yeah, pretty much everyone who's coming back here has a death warrant signed against him. From and from the person they're there to meet, yes, no less. So uh, because I didn't want to die in it, I don't remember what he's talking about there. Some some about dying in it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so the Hound is just basically going. This is a bad idea, man. What the fuck? This is all. Every bad idea has some Lannister cunt behind it, and then some Clegane cunt to help him see. So they've been working together for a long time. So they're, they're referencing their, their their shared history there. Yeah. And then, uh, dun, 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 here comes the queen. And here is the gigantic moment. The uh, hound and the mountain face to face. That's a big deal. I was just going to point out that her arms look, she looks like that uh, robot from, uh, from, uh, space, space show. Yeah. Lost, I, in, lost in space. At this point, all the neon lights in my head were going off thinking, Klee game bowl, Klee game bowl. Cersei because bowl, they're, Cersei bowl. Because they're in what's effectively an arena and they're, they're finally coming face to face again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this is probably the best we're going to get this whole episode. Maybe it'll happen eventually, but we're not going to get it now. So I was trying to kind of stem my expectations. You didn't think they were actually going to throw down right now? No, I did not think that. Yeah. The only way I think it maybe could have happened is if it like happened impulsively from the get-go. Like right, the hound snapped or something like that. We don't want to give away that, that it happen. did or didn't happen. It maybe may, it did happen. It may or may not have happened. Maybe, yeah. We don't want to spoil it. <laughs> so the, oh, yeah. Everybody, everybody, I like the way they film this. All the, everybody sort of takes their turn giving each other dirty looks. Like, you know, well, or just like recognizing people. But we do a lot of glancing shots here. Where there's like eyes just looking at, oh, there's that guy. There's Euron looking at Theon. Yeah, it, it's always good guy versus adversary. So it's Theon looks over and sees Euron. Tyrion right. looks over and sees Cersei. The Hound looks over and sees the mountain. Yeah. Well, John looks over and sees the Night King. Yeah. Brienne saw that Jamie, but funny. they're they're buddies, kind of. Yeah. The John sees the Night. <laughs> He's just standing back behind him. <laughs> He's just in the background. Nobody yeah. nobody says anything. There's the Hound looking at the mountain. Uh, man, with that what a face. He needs a little lotion, a little moisturizer. And, uh, the first thing I saw was like, well, how does he even know? That, how does he recognize that's his brother with the helmet? I was like, oh yeah, there's only one ten foot tall monster in the world. Right. Right. And <laughs> it's he probably hard to ignore. He probably knows that his brother's been turned into the Cersei's main bodyguard, right? Um, uh, I mean, well, that, he was always like she was. She was she he was always the, the the protector of the queen. I mean, no, he wasn't. his position hasn't changed. Before? Yeah, I remember he was out there hacking people to pieces alive, and she went out there and asked for his help in the trial by combat against uh, Ober and Martell. Yeah, that's where he died. Yeah, 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 no, he served her, but before that, he was like a knight. Remember, he chopped the horse's head yeah, off. Yeah, he served stuff. at her behest, but, but he was never, like, by her side. He's worked for the Lannisters for a long time. Yeah, I'm he, just saying, uh, there seems pretty reasonable that the Hound would have heard, hey, did you hear about your brother, the fucking guy? He's, now he's a zombie bodyguard. Yeah, it's possible. Ravens yeah. get around, Raven. as we know. Yeah, goss, the gossip mill likes to uh, mill. Um, all right, so there you are. And they, so he walks right up to him, though. This where's your blood pumping right now, James? Uh yes. And I was wondering, it's like, how tall is the hound? I mean, they're looking at each other right in the eye in that one. They're both. And I was, I was thinking maybe the hound's standing on top of something, but no, they're mm -hmm. they're pretty much they're big dudes. Yeah, no, he's on Tyrion. Tyrion's on his hands and knees. Yeah, he's really sturdy. Um, and I knew it wouldn't make any sense for it to happen right now, but I was hoping that maybe the mountain would speak or do something to acknowledge that he recognizes his brother, which would tell me that there's something in the mountain that still is human. Right. What does he say to him, though? He goes, you remember me? Yeah. yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. But there's no responding from the mountain at all. I was hoping that they would make up and they, we could have Clegane Spoon. Mm. You know, Big Spoon, Little Spoon. Oh, as I like to call it, Big Spoon and Milk. Yeah, I, think it's more, I think it's more sensitive to say that you're the milk instead of another fucking spoon. Mm. Um... Yes, uh, I didn't listen to what you said. What I said you? the hound could use some makeup. What do you mean? I love it. I like it. The molten lava it's, scar it's pizza face. <laughs> um, that's not how it ends for you, brother. So he's basically saying, but you're on notice, pal. And you know who's coming for you. That's right. And that right there is Cleegan Bowl confirmation. And then he gives him a Bible and says, Jesus, <laughs> he's much stronger than me. <laughs> Look out, but Jesus. That, that, that is the, yeah. the line of the episode for me. So this promises that at some point, might be this episode... We're going to see the bull to end all bulls. I imagine that this is the first moment in the entire episode where people gathered in living rooms around their couches, eating popcorn and hot wings would have jumped up and went, Roar! Yahoo! <laughs> because I wanted to, but I had you... no popcorn or hot wings. Nope, that's because I ate them while James was, was pooping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, all right, so yeah, I, I think we're, everybody kind of expected uh, that there'll be a, these guys will have it out at some point. I but hope it's with fire. I hope he holds the, we, hound's the mountain's face in the fire. The problem is we don't always get... We rarely get what we want. We uh -huh. rarely get what we think is justice or what we think is deserved. And yeah. characters have lamented to that fact before. Like Arya saying certain things like how how we wanted Sansa to be the one to kill Ramsay. And he, she did in a way, sort of. She walked away and let the dogs after him. Yeah. But she really wasn't the architect to defeat him. 
Yeah, that so, would have been kind of crazy if Sansa... Well, but in a way she was, because yeah. she got the Vale army to come to Winterfell and all that. True. But still, it would have been... There could have been more satisfying ends to that, and to other pairings of two different characters. Like, you would hope that one person would end in a specific way. Like when the dogs are biting Ramsay's face, and then all of a sudden Sansa comes from off screen and starts chewing on his face with the same ferocity as those dogs. Or, ah! I, I would actually <laughs> like that, yeah. <laughs> that would have been a little out of character. <laughs> okay. But like when Joffrey died, yeah. you kind of wanted to see Sansa do it. Yeah. Although I understand, given the circumstances and the story and what needed to happen, that wasn't plausible. But yeah. just from a visceral fan reaction, you want to see justice be inflicted by the hand that has been wronged the most. That's one of the common themes with this show is justice denied. And that's well, why ju when justice has finally arrived or achieved, it's 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 rare and therefore special. And therefore people cheer for when just like when Walder Frey got killed. I think yeah. that was a moment of justice. It seems like the only time we tr get true justice is with Arya. Seeing uh, her take care of, what, what, what's the guy? I can't think of the guy's name right now. But Tony Gwynn. No, the pedophile with the, the little girl. Tony Gwynn. No. no, I'm joking. You, you know his He's name. A great guy. I don't know. I, uh, but, that's just a random. Come on, what's his name? The pedophile? Yeah. Varys? No, Varys is not a pedophile. Well, I don't know. Tr Varric Trin? Trent. Oh, Murrin Trent. Murrin Trent. Thank yeah. you. He was the Kingsguard guy. Yes. Yeah. She stabs him in the eyes. Yes. You might have already and said then that. cuts his throat. Yeah. All right. So there we go. All right. Um, the Sunday's having a doing a little yoga. No, it's her, I meant to say meditation. By the way, it's just blinking her eyes. Um, all right. So everybody's looking around. Look at her. Oh, she's so tall. Um, but the weird Jamie. thing is, they're both looking at each other with an uneasiness, because I think right before this. Uh, Cersei says she didn't travel with you, she didn't come with you, and they're like, no, she did not come with us. Right. Which means that they knew she came alone, and the only way she would come alone is via dragons. So they're like, oh crap, she's going to show up with the dragon. Mm -hmm. So they're just kind of nervously twitching, waiting for the inevitable, which then happens. Yeah, which is, uh, is when you when you do drive a dragon, you do make an arrival. Like, it's a yeah. pretty impressive arrival. Like, when I roll up in my used Prius, new airbag, what, what? And she could have at least put a muffler on a dragon. <laughs> It's like I got a quiet. Um, she drives an electric dragon. She yeah. just rolls up silently. <laughs> Hybrid dragon. Oh, I can barely hear it. Um, so screeches. Uh, wings are flapping. Screech comes in. Yeah. Hey guys, the screech screech. Uh, so rawr! Both dragons. Very cool. I thought and at the, at the time, I said I think this is a miscalculation. You did say because that because I said that. If you know that you only have two dragons left, the best thing you can do is to only bring one dragon. That way you're not showing that you're bringing your full force, you're not bringing your full hand, and you conceal the fact that you've lost one of your dragons. Right. Bringing two reveals that there's not three. Right. Or at least it lends no lends credibility to the theory that there might not be three because it's right. not not total confirmation. But you disagree with me at the time because you're like, oh, well, it could show that maybe the dragon could be anywhere. The dragon could be, in it, which is or a valid that point. She needs to show all her power. Yeah, but I, like, I look thought what I'm that rolling with bitch. I thought that doing this would be kind of telling. It yeah. would be a, a clue. Like when I get into a fight on, at the beach, I always lift up my shirt to show my Glock, and then I always do my other one, the other shirt to show my Uzi. <laughs> what? I don't know. I, I don't know. I watch a lot of movies. Um, there's a there's, two shirts there's a guy. on the beach. James, quit questioning the master. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, so she takes an Uber here. She gets an Uber, or as James corrected me when I made that joke while we were watching it, a a lift. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo, James! You are truly the uh, the, the, the lift-eyed raven. raven the, yes. The ravens and. Um, all right, so there she is. She she lands and rawr, makes her entrance and makes her uh, makes everything known. What if the dragon was wearing a ring? Can you imagine how awkward that would look? Like when the Simpsons characters wear rings, I always uh, thought that was strange. I would prefer it be a pinky ring. I know yeah. how much you like those. Oh, be one of these, just like Tyrion. <laughs> yeah. And Varys, they wear matching pinky rings. Okay, I also thought that was a really badass move of to like not just land, but to also like the dragon sort of crawls and breaks his way down this thing and just kind of like gets her down lower to the ground with this big clumsy awkward bird that what, she's driving around would have been hilarious though if she slipped and just started rolling down the neck with, <laughs> oof, 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 <laughs> and like landed in the dust and had to like dust herself off and stand up <laughs> like leslie nielsen shows exactly up for some <laughs> oh geez <laughs> Uh, surely you're not you're not riding that dragon, are you? Uh, but don't yeah. call me dragon. Yeah. <laughs> don't call me dragon. Um, yes, that would would have been <laughs> that would have been good. Cersei doesn't reveal her feelings. I mean, you're supposed to go, oh my fucking holy shit! But she acts like she's not surprised because she doesn't want to, you know, you know, mm -hmm. tell people that she's freaked out. Because uh, for a lot of people here, this is the first time seeing a dragon. Yeah, you and McGregor's first time seeing mm -hmm. the dragon. Did you see the you and McGregor Mayweather fight the other yeah. day? It was pretty good. I uh, I went to I was basically watching a crawl on CNN. Oh. Of the updates for it because it costs ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents to get the pay per view feed. Two words, my friend. 
Periscope! All right, so there's a... Uh, what that is. All right, well, hey, get off the Reddit a little more, pal, and join <laughs> the rest of us on Twitter where the real action is, and you would have... Okay, so then the dragon takes off. I thought this was a cool shot. I just thought it was neat. It just felt... It felt... It, like, the, it's the same thing with video games. It seemed like there's a, a way of of making the effects in which in video games it's all effect but in this it's like you know special effects and uh hold on where they they feel like they're touching the ground or they feel like they're actually interacting with the world in which they're added well, and it felt like he was actually interacting i'm gonna say something completely opposite i know you are and i have a rebuttal already because it came up in the comments and you are about well, to get to torn no, down no no the last time in the comments someone had a good point i said that it oh, was kind on. of odd Wait, well, let's make your point first okay i said it was kind of odd oh. that at the time oh, that sorry. Uh, Tyrion was next to the dragon that him the dragon flying away did not send Tyrion flying propelling head over heels through the air but they said that the dragon waited until he jumped off the cliff before flapping his wings correct which is true I agree with that that's a very good point that was a great but point but here the dragon is on terrestrial ground and he has to take off at which point it would create a massive down thrust which would send those little canopies right there fluttering much more than it would have nor normally and would have sent dust and somewhat flying much more violently than i would have expected well, that's what that is is dust he did that plus he used his legs look how powerful these legs are james i did some squats last week i know what it's like to yeah. have big leg muscles it doesn't he seem... jumped real high because he's got magic mm -hmm. i don't think it's was ex i don't think the emphasis was there enough I think um, it would have been a more powerful display of wind. Of wind. So you're saying, though, to me, to re 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 refute what I said about it felt like the dragon was actually there, was that the fact that his wings didn't send everybody flying meant that that didn't, doesn't feel that same for I, you. I think the fact that it was so subdued kind of killed the immersion fact for me a little bit. Okay. All right. Fair enough. That it made it obvious that there was no dragon there, that it was all CGI. Well, Which obviously I knew because obviously dragons died 20 years ago. Yeah, they don't live anymore. No. Yeah, not since the mid-90s. That's when Saved by the Bell went off the air. Coincidence? Mm -hmm. no. I think not. Um, but yeah, okay, fair enough. So the wind, you're okay. But, I, but I for still story purposes, for, you can't have me, everyone just flying over and picking themselves up. This is not a Leslie Nielsen movie, these, as you said. These super well put together queens are just getting blasted over by <laughs> yeah. dusty wind, and they're yes, oh, Cersei's hair is all in her eyes and wrapped around her crown, and everyone's like blowing <laughs> dust off themselves. Daenerys has a newspaper on her face. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this phone book's flying. And it's basically like, have you seen this man with a picture of Tyrion? Like on when it? Superman lands, it's supposed to everybody's supposed to go oh shit oh jesus or when superman swoops down and catches lois lane at the very last yeah. second her back just cracks in half <laughs> snap because that's what should happen that's what should happen if, if, if there were any real justice anyway so they blow away and they're fine that's why she's got the short hair though it's easier to, mm -hmm. to withstand dragon lift take her off. bowl cut her bowl cut cersei bowl oh my god it makes total sense everything comes together that's why i asked if you were making fun of her haircut earlier no i didn't even connect that at all well bowl cuts you have the line around the i sides. know it's not yeah. a perfect it's not like a dumb and dumber bowl yeah, cut, but it's, bowl it's cut. like a lego helmet cut this looks like a little bit of a Lego helmet cut. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I like the tiara, though. I wish I could get one for me for when I walk down the aisle. Um, all right, so there they go. Uh, they're having a nice time. Everybody's like, whoa, fucking dragon, huh? It would be funny if the dragon pooped a big, big steaming hot pile of dragon, flaming dragon poop. <laughs> that would be, like, <laughs> volcanic. It just sets one guy on fire. Um, all right, so there's, you know, still a lot of more stare downs and stuff. And Oh, she's, <laughs> she's frustrated. talking about our recap. <laughs> yeah, she, well, welcome to the finale. <laughs> I, okay, so we better. She's saying that to Daenerys. Yeah, but Daenerys yeah. goes, then goes, go fuck you, bitch. She goes, my apologies. I'm but sorry. having just seen something as majestic and terrifying as a dragon for the first time, her only response is, "You kept us waiting." Right. It's right. a show of power. Totally. When it, she's right, she shouldn't be all freaked out about the dragon. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than your leader having emotions, going, "Ooh, boy, ooh, wow." You're supposed to look at it and go, eh, yeah, 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 if, big fucking deal. If I were Cersei, I'd be sitting there wearing a massive dress. And I won't explain it because I've got the scorpion from Kyburn under the dress just pointing at the dragon. Oh. Oh, I see. She, she'd hide the scorpion in there like a... <laughs> yes. Yeah. And she'd like reach in and be like, oh, excuse me, I've just got to scratch my vagina. Don't mind me. <laughs> she starts aiming and you hear mechanical <laughs> clanking going on under there. Her legs go real wide. She's rotating. <laughs> <laughs> like strippers lining up their ping pong balls. A little red dot comes out and goes in the dragon's forehead. <laughs> Three little red dots at angles, just yeah. like uh, Predator. All right, so uh, all right, you're you're on sees the or then you're on, fucking you're, you're on pisses me off. He's every piece of shit asshole guy that ever was an asshole to me. He has to be the centerpiece. And he needs to go. He needs to be done. Um, where, wait, where to go? Did Euron? Did, did I miss that? I thought Euron came out of his. Oh yeah, he starts ragging at him. Euron's yelling at yeah. Theon. You're right. You're right. I think saying, I, I have your sister Yara. If you don't submit to me right here and right now, she dies. And Tyrion's like, uh, newsflash, bigger things going on here, dumbasses. And then he changes his vitriol toward Tyrion. Right. 
right? Why are you talking? And he's all confident and cocky. His and uh, we don't even let your kind. He says, "Yeah, where you're, where where I'm from, we would kill you, you at child dwarf yes. at childbirth is for to the, do parents. the parents of mercy." Yeah. So then, uh, Cersei puts him in Cersei. Cersei puts him in his place as as she should have, because mm-hmm. that guy's being a real piece of shit. And shut the fuck up, you're on. You're on notice. I was gonna say that. Notice? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, see, that's why. That's why you and I are the the greatest team to hit YouTube since. Uh, d- 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 Blue's Clues. Um, all right, so there they go. Uh, Theon, of course, is having those. You know, he's a little psychologically messed up. Probably has all kinds of complicated feelings. You can tell because he's moving his head like that. Oh, man, boy. Um, all right, so anyway, Tyrion's taking the lead here with this awkward conference meeting here, and uh, as the you know, he he's like, "Hey, we don't like each other, but we got we got more uniting us with this new enemy than we have dividing us." Mm-hmm. Is that essentially it? He's basically, I did not come here in my MC Hammer pants to argue. Where's MC Hammer pants right there? Oh yeah, <laughs> he goes, "I'm too legit, too legit to quit," <laughs> and he starts shuffling back and forth uh, without face face because we could fight without that. We don't have to talk in order to keep hating each other but we are talking so uh and then john steps in and it's like it's just it's about living it's not about fighting um and he refers to the night king yeah he's talking about the common enemy that they need to unite against rather than worry about their petty squabbles of kingdoms and who sits upon the iron throne yeah lord Tyrion tells me a million people live in this city at one time i was was going out with this girl named egret well she would let me do things to her that were oh man uh, I think about her a lot. I'm a lot. I'm lonely a lot. A lot. A lot. Okay. All right. Um. I imagine. I'm sorry. I'm probably being really annoying here, but most of them would be an improvement. That's what he, a, what he says. That when the Night King comes, that's a million more people that he'll add to his army if we do nothing. Yeah. And she's basically. This is her she's, saying. She's it. making a joke of it, saying that I imagine for them it would be an improvement to be right. a, an undead creature that in the army so of the horrible. dead. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. Um. So anyway, John's like. Uh, I don't know. You, you you can talk. I don't know. I, Who's she's talking? A, it's she's, my brother. Oh, that's serious. Right. She's essentially saying you're asking for a truce. So you're basically saying what you want from me is for me to withdraw my army, pull back my army, stand down while you go and you face a, uh, an enemy in the north, which I don't even know exists. So essentially, you're expecting me to trust you to say that I cannot keep an eye on your army because I'm pulling mine back. And you're not going to come back with four times the men right. to, to crush me after I lay low and allow you to do your plotting and conniving elsewhere. Yes, right. And da- Daenerys is like, no, we need to deal with this thing. Because she's fully on board with that sort of threat coming on here. So yeah, she she's did. seen it. She's seen the Night King. She's right. seen one of her dragons die. She knows how powerful yeah, they are. Yeah, she's like someone that's been to Canada. It's like, it's really bad up there. We yes. need to do something about it. <laughs> um, she saw a bear get into a trash can. <laughs> she's like, oh yeah. my god. <laughs> she saw somebody help another guy with a, with a flat tire. Yes. I feel like that's the state flag of Canada. It should just be a guy helping another guy fix a flat tire. Yeah. Um, Canada is pretty much the the gold standard of how all nations should be. I, I wish states from America could break off and join Canada. I think we'd all do better. Um, yeah. All right, so uh, that will erase the last fifty years. There's no kind. Con- okay, so Tyrion is saying here, like, uh, yeah, look, we we're this is we're gonna we're not gonna talk you out of this. Yeah, we, nothing, but we did bring evidence. Yeah, nothing that I say here is gonna bring us to terms of peace. But right. there is something that I can show you that will at least align our interest. If only temporarily. So then Judge Judy's bailiff walks over <laughs> yes, and grabs the bailiff. You know, that guy makes like millions. No, I'm sure. Oh, what a life. God damn it. I think it was a real bailiff, too. But I think he just knew Judge Judy and she liked yeah, him. Yeah, I'm sure. Him. Man, god damn it. I you know, she wears hammer pants? Yes, of course. She wears like these very wide-legged, loose-fitting blue denim jeans below her. Because uh... she's a rational grandma. No, it's right, like, so, uh, cool. It is cool, yeah. All right. So anyway, this is what I was saying earlier about it's his job to look after the bait. You know, like he's he's the guy that's taking care, so he was checking on the boat. But this is why I was extra worried though, because he merely tapped on it before and the white started screeching and kicking and screaming. Right. And now he's been carrying it for a while, banging it down on the ground, taking rumbling, vibrating the cage, taking right. metal bars out of it, and yet dead silence. Dead silence. So I was thinking that too, like, oh crap, it's if it was all this effort for nothing. Woke up so quickly. I really did think that. I was like, I mean, I mean, not that it's, I mean, that's what we're all supposed to say. I thought it because they, 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 they manipulated me into thinking it. Because <laughs> that's exactly what they want you to think. And they're all like, oh, shit, it's not working. And she's like, really? You dumbasses, this is your show. And so he, so the hound kicks it, which I predicted. Mm-hmm. And uh, out comes the guy. Ah, it finally turns into an episode of the AMC's The Walking Dead. Rawr, take that. Rawr. Look at that face, huh? Good God. Where and did he... the light bulbs come from? LEDs? Yeah. Um, and he goes straight for Cersei. 
Yes, he just gets up, starts running, and... But, uh, of course, we can see that he's chained, so he's not going to make it directly to her. Yeah. I was kind of hoping it'd be, like, one of those Snoopy cartoons or, dog, you know, like the dog just reaches the end no, of the chain. I mean, what, it kind of was. What but would seem He got kind of close, though. I mean, why wouldn't his head have popped off and the body would have kept going for her? Maybe they have him on one of those baby harnesses. You know, it's yes. a little bit better for holding on to the baby. Mm -hmm. Um... It's like whenever you walk your walk over a river, you should chain the baby to your chest. Yes, but this is one uh, of the first times I've ever seen an expression of terror or horror in Cersei. Right. Well, I hope I have a shot of that. I don't think I do. But he got real close to her. I thought I thought it was odd that the mountain would have let that thing get that close to her because it kind of it kind of was fairly close. Yeah, I think his reflexes just weren't on par with what they needed to be to stop it. Yeah, that could. It be. does seem odd that he didn't step up and slash it down immediately because he's usually like right on that. Yeah. Anybody. Even just one step. But anyway, all right. So the hound comes in and grabs his sword. He's a good sword fighter. We all know that. And he hacks him in half. Of course, does that slow him down? Not even a little bit. Well, yeah, it does actually quite a bit. But, he, you know, now he starts crawling around without his legs. And his legs were still moving. I, was, <laughs> I said it would be funny if they had taken his legs, propped him up, put a table on top of his legs, and then they could have a drink carrier walking mm -hmm. around. That would have been great. <laughs> a wine bearer. A wine bearer. <laughs> but this, the whole point of this is a demonstration that these things do not die easily. They take a beating and they keep coming. Mm -hmm. You can cut it in half and they're still they're still at it. Cersei's course is emotionless as usual. And uh, rawr, Jon Snow's watching what's going on. Quyburn's super interested. This is, yeah. his, this, is like, uh, this is like the first time that you got to use T1 internet instead mm -hmm. of dial-up. <laughs> yeah. You're like, holy fuck, oh my god! Yeah, I remember that moment. You know he wants to try and emulate this effect. But yeah. little does he know, this is dark northern magic this is not science something's going on here yeah uh he's although he's you know he he's he's he, he keeps a foot in both worlds magic and science you know what i mean like i think it's a combination of both for this well guy. he's more of like a potion maester type thing of yeah. elixirs and things i don't think magic is really his forte so there's nothing supernatural about the mountain well i think the mountain was res resuscitated through some sort of chemical concoction but, I, I don't think but I, why, would, I don't think magic is involved why not have magic involved with the chemical concoction why because i that? don't see him as a magic weaver i see him as a man of science a man of yeah but they don't understand the chemistry so it also makes sense that they wouldn't understand the magic going on either like it's chemistry all magic is really is just science you don't yet understand well magic in, in the series has been kind of defined and isolated into two things one being the lord of light Mm -hmm. which is more of a religious type thing, power granted directly by a deity, and two being the the children of the forest vis and in connection with them, the White Walkers. Yeah. So at no point does it show in any capacity a human being like Kyburn being capable of wielding what is truly magic, aside from the guy over in Essos, the wizard guy over there. Yeah, the who, House of the Undying. Yes. Yeah. But... I don't know if he's connected to them or if he, it just doesn't seem feasible to me that he would be a magic user, you know? Sure. No, I, I'm not even necessarily saying it's on purpose. I'm just saying like, to me there, I don't see the point in saying that magic and the chemistry or whatever, whatever way they understood chemistry works with potions and stuff. That's, those aren't necessarily separated. I think I could see a Venn diagram where there's a little overlap there where, yeah, there's probably, it's plausible to me yeah. that the chemistry would have elements they don't understand that could be attributed to magic. It seems like what much. he did was he stopped the poison's effect and left the mountain in the state that he was at the time that the poison had taken hold. Probably. Much like Shireen was cured by the grayscale being inhibited and stopped without fully curing. Yeah. If I were betting, I would say he's not a magic guy. Yeah. Totally. But I'm just saying it's possible. I'm like the Mythbusters. It's plausible. Jamie. Er, Walrus. Yes. All right. So let's keep going. Um, uh, so fingers are moving around. That's always fun. Everybody. Oh, look. He's, he's giving a little shoulder shimmy, James. Yes. Shake look it up. off. Shake yeah. it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. One time I dated this girl for a while and she would do that. Just like kind of goofing around to music. And it was a little bit annoying at the time. But then after it ended, I, I kind of miss it. Um, all right, so there, uh, there they go. That was like 20, 10 years ago or more. So it's yeah. pretty... <laughs> so John picks up that hand. Like, and, there, are, uh, there are two ways we can kill it. Yep. And uh, he explains that the, the two ways... Oh, yeah, what if John... <laughs> what if John started masturbating with the hand? <laughs> mm, yeah. Sorry. I think that would hurt his argument. <laughs> yeah. This is the third way to kill it. <laughs> it's allergic to... Okay, I won't say that. All right, so so then the Sir Davos goes, Oh, all right, sure. He makes him a fire with this thing. I like that it took him two tries. I like to think that it took, like, like they had a bunch of takes where they just couldn't get it to light. But anyway, he lights it up and immediately torches it. Right? There's John. Mm -hmm. 
Look at this guy. This is going to be some asshole's Halloween costume. I guarantee it. I hope it gets too hot in your fur jacket there, you jerk. I like to imagine there's like a man in like blue spandex crawling around with strings pulling on the fingers to make the move. Oh, right. <laughs> well, there's a whole guy who's attached to blue spandex yeah. with, this, like, with his hand moving around. So he sets it on fire. Ah, oh, my fingers. Oh, like little worms. Oh, but it shows the white screeching at this point. Does it seem to imply that the white could feel the pain of its own hand burning? Because it's still connected, it's still moving through it. There's still a magical connection between the two. I think there's an, an, an that is being implied. Yeah. Because remember uh, on the last episode when he was laying down and the hound kicked him, all the other whites around the shoreline started screeching as well, as though they had some sort of share. Well, we know they have a shared connection. There's like right. a hive mind being controlled by a single uh, white walker. Yes. So it's almost as though they he does feel the pain of his residual or his lost limbs. Sure. Yeah, that seems to be the case. Like, he, he's losing some. But do you think he's controlling the hand or it's just wiggling around with his whatever his primitive instincts are? I, you know? he's, I, I buy that he's controlling it. Yeah. I mean, this guy's no more sophisticated than Oscar the Grouch. All right, so John drops the hand in a nice little flare. He does the <laughs> mic is, drop. This is Chris Rock mic drop moment. What's up? And uh, we can, and then the other way is Dragon Glass. So they brought research. They brought proof. Mm -hmm. They even proved they did a proof of concept here with the way the weapons work. And you can see the body language in Cersei. Her her shoulders tensed up. Mm -hmm. She definitely looks not at ease. Yeah, yeah. She's wondering why she's wearing this uh, Lost in Space outfit. And I, I should mention something else that we didn't point out before. But you asked why the Mountain didn't step forward to protect Cersei. Yeah. If you go back to that scene right uh, a little bit further, yeah, yeah. Look at this scene right here. His sword is sheathed. But if Correct. we go back to the moment where the they pull the chain back, he has his sword out. So he was preparing to defend her. All right, let's click click around a little bit here. I don't know if we got a shot of that. Maybe, maybe not. I saw it. You'll see it. Keep just keep going. Oh, keep going shot. forward. Yeah. There, sword. Oh, is out. our sword is out. <laughs> that is so obvious. Look at that huge mm -hmm. sword. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious. There's something hilarious with the way. Okay, sorry. I don't know why it's funny. making me laugh. Um, okay, uh, I lost my spot here. James made me back up a little bit. <laughs> uh, is that it? No. Okay, so there we go. He picks him up by his hand and stabs him right in the chest, which I like that move. That seems with to be the dragon glass. With the dragon glass. To show that this is the definitive way to kill it. Yes, and also a terrible way to treat people who have, you know, or are differently abled. You know, I think it's a little bit... No, I'm joking around. It's a white. You're supposed to murder the fucking thing. Uh, because it's a monster. Um, so, oh, I killed it. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, it's a white. And so Dan Danny's like, well, are you finally buying it? And Cersei, of course, is not that interested. Uh, John tells her... I like that he named it. Mm. Did he spend all day thinking of that? Come on. Couldn't have called it the, the, the War of the Whites. Two whites yeah. don't make a wrong mm. war. Come on. So, if two whites are wrong, then several million are... What's, it, what's he gonna say we need to bond together to fight the white power the white power <laughs> that would have been good <laughs> the great war <laughs> but he calls it the great war that's just funny um all right so uh she, she's like damn my boyfriend is really putting another Ooh. mama's gonna have a little sugar for that proboscis they're, they're not together as of yet they have a crush on each other and i don't blame them because they're both attractive um so anyway how many are that jamie speaks up finally he wants to know how many whites we're talking about they're like a lot, okay? Millions. He says hundreds, a hundred thousand at least. Yeah, and Jamie goes, oh God, this is Jamie. Here. Oh Jesus. He, he you know, grabs his uh, shirt and starts yanking on his collar <laughs> a little bit. Um, you're on, of course. Uh, you know, we, we know his response. He wants to know if they can swim because he's a water guy. And they swim. know for a fact from the last episode, no, they cannot. Right, right. It would be weird if they could swim. So John confirms that they can't. He goes, in my life, I've seen a lot of terrible, horrible, unimaginable things, but mm -hmm. this is the first thing I've ever seen that has actually terrified me. Which was, I I just thought this was a little, I mean, I didn't think about it too much, mm -hmm. but I was a little like, oh, okay, well, it's a good thing he's out of the picture, but that was a little weird. And then I moved yeah. right on. I didn't think too yeah, much it, about it. This is not the end of this interaction. So he basically says, I'm taking my fleet. I'm going back to the Iron Islands. And I suggest you do the same to Daenerys yeah, and right go back here. to your islands because after winter ends, we'll be the last two people left alive. Right. Because if they can't swim, they can't get to them. And then he walks off. Yeah. Little do they know they have a dragon, but, you know. Yeah, right. They have an Uber. I mean, a Lyft. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Cersei agrees. He's right to be afraid. So, yeah, wow, she, she kind of gets it. But she says he's also a coward for abandoning her. Right, right. So, um, seems like Euron is out of the picture now, but mm -hmm. in a weirdly convenient we way. We may come back to his role in the series afterwards. Yeah, we know he's got Yara, the pirate. Mm -hmm. Yara, right? Mm -hmm. I, I made that joke today. I'm just, uh, okay. uh, everything we suffered will have been for nothing. Uh, that's, uh, who's talking there? Is that, is that John? No, I think that's Cersei. 
Oh, all right. The crown accepts your truce. Oh, yeah, that's right. She seems to agree right away. And everybody's mm -hmm. like, yes, she bought it. She went for it. Even even Tyrion's like, oh, boy, what the... This, this happened a little too quickly. John's relieved. Davos is like, oh, yes. Brienne's like, oh, yeah. John's like, Arr. Like my sound effects, James? More oh. like Brianna's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Slip into a Slim Jim. Snap it to a Slim Jim. Slip. That was snap. Slip. You're thinking of snap bracelets. I think it's snap. I literally have no idea. I, I don't think know. it's snap it to a Slim Jim. I think we need Why to Why does Google snap this. make more sense than slip? Because you snap a Slim Jim. You don't the whole thing is he busts Randy, whatever Randy his name is. Randy the Macho Man Savage. He busts through a wall, snaps a Slim Jim and have it go, snap it to a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. What does it mean slip it to a Slim Jim? It's like slip the Slim Jim into my mouth. That doesn't sound no, appealing. No, you slip it. You slip into a Slim Jim means you put on a slip like wrestlers wear. They wear tights. They're called slips. And then you put a Slim Jim and it turns into poop. I think I might on. need some closure on this to make sure. Yeah, that's... Let's, let's know in the, in, the, in the arguments below. All right, so oh, comments, not arguments. Oh, no, comment, <laughs> argument. that's, that's pretty much more accurate. <laughs> Just... All right, so then she says, but here's the deal. Then she has her conditions. She, she she started with the agreement and then laid out conditions. You're supposed to start with the conditions, man. Mm -hmm. And then she says, so here's the thing. John, after this is done, the king doesn't come back. You So she, she's basically saying Danny has to lose her strong power, her strong, powerful ally of the north. Yes, he says and that. John won't, won't yeah. ever mess with me. Yeah, and John stuff. has essentially bend the knee to Cersei and agree right. not to attack or oppose her rule in Westeros. Right. Right. But she's not asking the same of Daenerys because she knows Daenerys would not do that. Yeah. And and she knows that Ned Stark's son, because of his goddamn honor and loyalty... Which she has exploited many times to their detriment. Right, right. She knows he, he will not lie. Um, he's like Abe, Abe Lincoln. Is that the guy that couldn't lie? Uh, wasn't no. There, wasn't, there, wasn't there some guy that was like, I shall not tell a lie? That I think was, that was George W. Bush. Yeah, George W. Bush. I, sh I shall not think above <laughs> a fourth grade level. That fucking war criminal. Um, all right, th that is why I cannot give you... Okay, so John... You know, John is like, I'm true to my word. That is why I cannot give what you ask. I, of course, I don't know what else he said. But he was saying, no, I, 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 I can't well, worship two queens. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've, I've pledged to one, and I'm not going to lie here. Uh, so he does what his father, air quotes father, Ned Stark, would have done. Right. Do the honorable thing, tell the truth. But he did so at great detriment to the group because yeah. it was not the answer that Cersei wanted to hear. And it causes a great division between their two yeah. interests. He's like, oh, I'm already seeing somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So John, John's not, he can't lie. Uh, then there's nothing left to discuss. So Cersei's like, all right, well, fuck you people then. You're, I'm not going to do this if you're not going to make me the queen. And when we're done with this. So uh, she's like, go ahead, go get killed by their buddies. And then uh, we'll, 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 we'll sweep up the, the mess afterwards. So they're all like, oh, fucking John, goddamn honest guy. Honesty has no place in Westeros. By the way, Danny and John could have gotten some incest tips from Jamie and uh, Jamie, Jamie and her. Maybe they could have hit it off. Hey, got any, got any tips for incest for us? We're, we're going to do some. They're not yet aware of their relation to one another. The only person oh, yeah. that knows the truth about them is Bran. That's right. Well, then Bran should be giving them some incest tips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much incest does Bran watch? If you had that power, you'd be watching porn, like real he, life porn. He's probably just replaying the scene from the tower in episode one over and over. He just has it on a loop. Of his dad? Uh, wait, no, of Jamie and Cersei. Oh, Jamie and Cersei, yeah. No, I'm saying as the, as the uh, raven, he can see anybody having sex he wants. Yeah. What a perv. I don't uh, think he can like, control like, it. When I was his point. age, I had like maybe a Playboy or some kind of like, you know, early BBS porn, or mm -hmm. way early, or mid 90s. Early your, in the 90s. Your National Geographics. Yeah. No, I never really beat it off to those. I used to do this. I, would, I think I tried a couple of catalogs here and there. But those were... Those were those the Toys R Us catalogs. Yeah, Toys R Us catalogs. <laughs> Mostly Ikea. <laughs> that was so wrong. Was, I ask, retract that. Ask this old house. I, I was saying that as though you were a child at the time, so it wouldn't be really yeah. creepy like if you did that right now. But then, the fact, oh, that's... I'm going to go get a refill of my I remember drink. the first time I... Uh, I regret I ever found out that. that my penis had anything going on there. It was in the, the bathroom of a bait shop. All right. Can we pause like two seconds. Yeah, we'll pause. Sure. All right. They walk off. There's Brienne and Jamie. They're all, they're good old, they're old pals, you know. It's been good to see you there, but I have a nice little moment. And Brienne is like, dude, you got to talk to your sister. Okay, man. This is not, look, seriously, this thing is a big deal here. I know this didn't go well, this first meeting, but we need someone. We need you to step up and help us out. Look, they tie their belts the same, James. It's almost as though they have the same customer. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, well, it might be a thing. Maybe that's just the technique. There's, just, there's no other, no better way to do it. Um, and you're loyal to Sansa and her, and her adult brother. <laughs> I like that. Is he talking about John or Bran? John. 
It's John. Yes. Um, oh, fuck loyalty. Ah, rah, talk to the queen. So she yells at him and they have a nice she's, moment. She's essentially asking him for a favor between two people who were friends at one time. Yeah. And by friends, there was almost like an implied love interest between the two that really couldn't have ever happened. Right. But she's asking based on their experiences. Yes. I also like that Jamie's uh, lion here looks like a thing just ate a whole bunch of horseradish or something. Just like something really foul tasting. Uh, all right. So there they go. They're walking off. And um, I just noticed this. See Those this clasps. Oh, I thought you were going to mention the clasps on the back where right he attaches his cape. Yeah, that is for his cape when he, when he, when he cosplays as Batman at Batman mm -hmm. Con. These are similar to Cersei's tiara. Mm -hmm. That's kind of neat, huh? Let's go to our tiara. Bam! Perfect. Great insight, Hank. Way to fucking ruin the video. All right, so 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 the, anyway, they're they're left to wonder what's going on here. They are going to cook up what's left of this white here and have a nice little barbecue. Mm -hmm. It's practically already dried, dehydrated meat anyway. So uh, all right, so then she's she's like, dude, I don't know why I'm turning them all into California. Cool California dude, types. Take dude, the 405. <laughs> your loyalty was like totally tone art, man. Like, I was seriously riding it, but it was like, you could, you didn't have to say all of those words, you know? You could have been true to yourself without saying what you really felt. Um, so she's saying Drogon, or my dragon died, not Drogon, I know, the other, one of the others. And uh, Viserion. Viserion, the green one. The yellow one. The yellow one, the yellow one, whatever. Yeah, the yellow one died. And, um, and Tyrion's taking a leak during all this. Yep, yep, he's over there. It's you don't. Okay, I was gonna say something. All right. But essentially, she's saying, "I appreciate what you said. It means a lot to me. But still, would it have killed you to have lied a little bit to keep our common interests in check? Right. So that right. we could at least get what we came for without having everything torpedoed by your sense of pride. Yes. Your like, sense of uh, dignity and what's the word yeah your desire to always do the moral correct thing this is when you get pulled over by your cops and the guy goes got any weed in the car and your friend goes yeah right over here yes. it's in this little <laughs> compartment that you would not necessarily see you want some <laughs> um I, I just want to find out look at this it's nice little hair thing there also huh? got a gun in the boot yes yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not even our car um dragons on our hair pretty cool mm -hmm. huh james all right so then uh learning how to, uh, yeah so they're, they're all kind of like dude Seriously, come on. But John is honor. He's wearing an animal on his yep. shoulders. He's got to be honorable. And he, um, he is embodying every the trait that gets every freaking Stark killed. Right. Just like he says. He right even there. acknowledges it. This is actually what like the audience was thinking. This is what yeah. I was thinking. It's like, like yeah. seriously, when are you gonna learn? When is this? Is you, don't you know what planet you're on? You're on Earth. Well, not uh, what planet are they on? Come on, George R. R. Martin. Have they, have they ever said Earth before? I don't think so. These fucking idiots haven't figured out they live on a globe for eight, eight, eight to ten thousand years of this. No one ever played with electricity. Not one guy got curious about lightning and figured it out. Once they get electricity, then they're going to turn into us, be a bunch of savages on the internet, murder, try, talking each other into suicide and stuff because we're terrible to each other. Uh, but, you know, static electricity. Hey, what are these sparks? They could have figured it out. They are all wearing fur. That's where static electricity comes from. Maybe there is no static electricity in Westeros. Oh, mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> then there are no more answers and better. Okay, so, yeah, they're saying lies, lies, lies. And, li and John is being very noble here, but, like, eventually we've all we have is lies or all we're going to have, we're never going to have real answers, right? Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty, it was even relevant to what we're dealing with today in our, in our pol pol political system. Well, nothing but lies, guys. It's not a terrible way to govern. But um, Tyrion's like, yeah, we're nice and good, but we're fucked. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Big deal. So we're all fucked because the White Walkers are coming. Well, not because of that, but because of what John said. Oh, all right. Yeah, exactly. The situation that he, they were in a position of winning, and John, with this, a simple line, turned that into a loss. Yeah. So Tyrion storms off, and he goes right out this door, and he goes, finally, a door for me. <laughs> <laughs> a door fit for a dwarf. <laughs> it's called a dwarf. <laughs> a dwarf. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, they didn't come all this way to have my... And yeah, so they're like, no, this is... We'll keep... Um, yeah, she'll definitely emerge. Oh, oh right, well, he's right, right. Saying John that, wants to go talk to her. Well, Tyrion first suggests that he'll go talk to her. Then John says oh, yeah. that he'll go do it. But Tyrion says, you know what? I'm going to go. Yes. And she's trying to say, no, I didn't come here to have you murdered here, buddy. Um, so I like... The, why do they say murder? Isn't because that weird that they use that as a word? No. Isn't that the same reason why it was it stood out to you when Euron was like, let's murder them? Well, because Euron was from the Iron Islands, where, it's, where it was like, for murder was a daily thing. It was, it was, yeah, it, but... it wasn't a taboo to them because they're a bloodthirsty turncoat kind of people who respect only pain and violence and same with these fucking monsters. I mean, there were, King's Landing is a more civilized place where a term yeah. like murder has more of a, a fitting role. Iron Islands, it doesn't mean as much. 
Right, that's not what I expected you to say. Um, okay, fair enough. I, I hear you. I, hear, I still think it's kooky, kooky that they use the word murder. Kill is the word you would use. Murder is just funny. Murder is, is just, just funny. I'm like, hey, I could, I'm going to murder him. In noble terms, it it has a place. But in like barbarian terms, it's a little silly. And I see Euron as more of a barbarian. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 yeah, I get you. I get you. I think the offering anybody nobility is only just giving them a mask to hide behind a shield. Like, I mean, because they're just as violent. They're more violent than what, anybody else. Which would be more funny if you saw like Conan the Barbarian throw his hands up and go, "Slay me now," or we say, "Kill me now," murder, murder me now. Yeah, I mean, murder. That would make it. It would be hilarious. Mm -hmm. Second degree assault me now. Yes. All right. So let's uh, keep moving on here. I'm getting us all distracted here. So uh, all right. So it finally it gets, gets settled that Tyrion's going to go talk. Davos is like, oh, I've got to take a shit. And uh, off he goes. Uh, poor guy. It's a brave little little fellow, though, huh, man? He yeah. he is marching into what he 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 doesn't know he's going to survive this at all. So he goes in. And I didn't think I I had my doubts as to whether he would too. I was like, is the big moment this season in going to be the death of Peter Dinklage, the man who mm -hmm. was seen to be immortal because fans love him so much, who has been untouchable up until this point? Would you say he's the star? I if would you had say to pick a single. I would. I mean, yeah. I mean, people are always going to say, "No, it's Daenerys. No, it's John." But no, to the, me, the most beloved character so far has been far and away Peter Dinklage. I'd say the top three are her. He John gets first and... billing. Does he? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's probably um, up there, and definitely in the top three, for, for, for sure, probably pretty much for sure top two. But once Daenerys and John start making babies, then they're gonna be. Online. Daenerys cannot get pregnant. Well, you haven't met John. Yeah, we'll see. That's, that's, that's a theory that John will be the one, possibly if they do become a couple, to break that theory. Somebody in our comments brought that up. Did not they? about the not about them getting pregnant, but about John's status. So remind me later to mention that. It's really interesting. I mentioned it to you briefly earlier. I thought it was fascinating. About his status. Oh, but yes. Oh, I see. I, I recall what you're saying. Now, yeah. I guess. All right. Fair enough. All right. So there's Jamie. He's uh, thinking about high school. I don't know. Um, you spoke with, so uh, at her until she kicked me. I don't know what they're talking, talking well, about. Well, he, he. Oh, he's talking to Tyrion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brienne implored Jamie to speak with Cersei to talk some sense into her, so this whole effort would not be torpedoed into nothingness. Yeah. He did so, but she kicked him out anyway. Now Tyrion is coming and saying, "Did you talk to her?" And he's like, "Yeah, I did." Until she kicked me out. Right. So she's not happy, and they all know. Uh, an unhappy Cersei is a dangerous mm -hmm. beast to be around. Yeah. Especially this guy to be around her because she re, she probably she's hates been, him more than anybody else. She's been else. trying to have him killed many times to the point that she had the heads of dwarves delivered to her ch private chambers to assess whether they were actually him or not. Yeah, that sucks. So what, can you imagine just being one of those guys? Just yeah. having your head chopped off because you happen to look like the dude? That's why I hope Mr. Clean never commits any murders. <laughs> um, I suppose we should say goodbye. Okay, so now he's like, all right, well... Uh, yeah, I can't protect you. She's most likely going to kill you. So, yeah. you know, you're an idiot to go in there, but I'm an idiot as well. So. Oh, no. All right, sorry. Weird edit there. We had a notification pop up. I had to turn off the thing. All right, so yeah, James, you're, whatever you were I saying. I know your Pornhub subscription was expiring. Uh, X Hamster. Okay, my friend. <laughs> All right. Um, that's the weirdest named one. Come on. I've so never even heard of that. X Videos. Which one do you like? I've never heard of these do things. Do you look at porn? No, not really. Is that why there's a pinhole above my bed and I sleep and you keep writing me emails to ask me to sleep in the nude? Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, Tyrion and, and Jamie um, walking on, rocking on. I forgot what we're talking about. Okay, because Tyrion's going in to, to meet his, his death here. The mountains let him in, walks him in there, closes his door. That guy's so big. Yeah, well, in the context of Tyrion, you know. Yeah, I know, it's... the scale. It's like putting a dime next to a thing instead of a quarter. Um but uh yeah so this is the chamber this is actually interesting kind of, i mean we've seen her here before too but tywin used to sit at this table like you yeah know, the daughters assumed the the position of power of the family now was this the same room where they had the the council meeting the small council meetings i think so that's think the table did, right there I think that's yeah. the table they used to do that at, yeah um so all right so Tyrion walks up a uh, little bit nervous and you know of course cersei is uh <laughs> he describes Danny is a foreign whore. Who well, she immediately about. comes out of the gate with an attack because she sees this this person, her own brother, as the reason that she has no family left. Right. The death of the mother gave mm -hmm. birth to him and died in the process. The death of her father, Tywin. Yeah. The the death of her children, who she blames him for, but she'll get into all that. Yeah, we'll get into all that. Uh, yeah, she's got a point about the killing the dad, but not killing the mom. Come on, you can't blame the baby for yeah. that shit. Come, that's not well, Tywin did. Tywin did, yeah, no, it's it's terrible, uh, and I'm sure the kid will feel guilt. Like if I killed my mom in birth, uh, I, even though I would know I didn't mean it, <laughs> you just emerged with a dagger, <laughs> <You're> like <"Nah, nah." laughs> it's blue eyes. It's, nah. <laughs> no, but like I'm sure children whose mothers died giving birth to them probably it probably haunts them their whole life. 
if yeah. they find out. Would you even tell a kid? No. Oh, you're Billy, good. now that you're five years old, I gotta tell you something. Yeah, you you died because you you were too big for your mom's uh, opening. I, I think eventually a kid would do the math. Go, hmm, mother died twenty years ago. I'm twenty years old. Hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be a real mind fuck to to have to. I mean, it's not your fault at all, but how could you not feel some mm -hmm. sense of hey, boy. Glad my mom lived when I came squirting out. Yeah, so she's saying the goal that you worked towards your entire life is bringing an end to the family. Yes, yes. And so they really they really rehash a lot of these old wounds. Yeah, and to, to kind of speed along a little bit, Tyrion's saying that is not what I want. That is never what I wanted to mm -hmm. do. I am not trying to bring destruction to the family. I'm trying to prevent it. He is being advisor to Daenerys Targaryen to prevent her from committing the atrocities yeah. that she may have wanted to or may have thought about committing to the first place. Saying, I saved you already. Yeah. You don't even know it. That yeah. he is the steady hand to her more impulsive nature. To, to Danny's, yeah. Yes. And saying that, but that Cersei is the beneficiary of that, because if he didn't yes. speak up, Cersei would be, be barbecued by And he that. says the one thing, the difference between the two of you is that you lack that steady hand. You lack the person to stop you from making impulsive, destructive decisions. Right. Yeah, yeah. And she retorts, you killed our father. That's like, that's pretty, you know, yeah. like, oh, yeah, really? You're about our family? And then he has his case is, yeah, but he was going to kill me for doing something I didn't do, and he knew it and never, you know, so I, I think he's got a decent point there. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, your papa, your, your papa was mean more than you. mean. Right. Yes. Uh, do you have any idea what you did when you fired it? So, yeah, she's, this is what you were saying about her blaming him for destroying their whole family. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically saying it was a catalyst that set events into motion where the vultures swooped down and tried to tear the Lannister family apart right. once they saw them as being in a form of weakness with the death of the Patriarch, the death of Tywin. Yes. So like, she hinted or she said it directly that certain it wouldn't have happened if Tywin was around. They wouldn't mm -hmm. have treated uh, our family that way if Tywin was, was the one that was in charge. So she blames him for the deaths of the two kids, the younger ones, the ones that weren't evil. No one would have touched them. If, yeah, there it is. No one mm -hmm. would have touched my father was here. That's right. Um... No one would have dead. I've never been more so. So he's obviously very upset. Uh, you know, or uh, he expresses his remorse for those, the deaths of Tommen and Marcella. Right, and he he tries to apologize for it, but she cuts him off and says, "Oh, not here, and especially not from you." Yeah, if it weren't for me, you'd have a father. If it weren't for me, you'd have two. So he he does own it. Um, but he does something very surprising at this point. He says, "I've thought about killing you more times than I can count." So if you do want to end me, do it, say the word, have the mountain strike me down. Yeah, so he volunteers himself up and says, let's get this over. Which I actually she's think... Been, she's been wanting to do this for a long time. Well, he's... I think he's basically... Accept, he, he seems to accept that it'll happen. It might happen. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem to really know. I think he's ready for this to happen. Yeah. In at least in, as much as uh, it makes sense to get it over with. Like, but, instead of... like. He's saying, I'd rather you killed me right away instead of waiting till the end of this and, to, and then you're going to kill me anyway. So if you've proved to me you won't kill me, then we can actually have a real kind. So he's forcing her to show her hand by saying, you can kill me right away. Right? Yeah, I guess so. But do I you think, think he's think smart. She does not elect to kill him. Right. But do you think she does that because she has feelings for him as a brother and sister? Or do you think it's because she realizes from a tactical standpoint, doing so would bring about fire and death to her in the red keep at the moment i think she's more selfishly motivated than altruistically or something okay I, 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 yeah like she would she piss off that, daenerys yeah she knows that the daenerys and her army is there she knows that the dragons are there yeah that she would not survive the night if they were if she were to kill they, yeah, the hand is, of the queen he is protected by his position as daenerys's yeah right hand man or whatever the or hand um all right, so but <laughs> as soon as it's over, though, he doesn't get killed. He runs over to the wine and shakes a big swing. Yeah, it's a bit of a relief for him. He is not a man known for his bravery. So good reason to drink is when you're not killed, uh, celebrate. <laughs> and then he also does this thing where he grabs the other wine glass and he brings it over and he offers Cersei a cup, which for her to accept a drink from him, although she doesn't stop him, I, don't, I wouldn't say she accepts it either. But uh, it shows that he's peacemaking, you know, that it would be, it would be a big gesture if she actually took it. But it's almost as though he's showing subservience to her, because what's the lowest position? What did Joffrey make him as an insult? Uh, being a, fl a flea? Cupbearer. Oh, cupbearer. So right. it's sort of like he's falling back into that role a little yeah. bit by saying, I am in Good. this moment beneath you. Let's talk on equal terms. That's right. Good. Well, not equal terms, but let's talk on yeah. you know charitable terms. I do this with my dad when we go out to eat, and he goes and uh, 
you know, he pays for it, and I go like, "Hey, here, here's your burrito, Dad." <laughs> it's, it's, it's Cersei's wine, is my point. Uh, that made no sense. Um, yes, my dad and I do love burritos. Okay, it's why we're still related. Uh, your love doesn't matter. Oh yeah, she's yelling at him here. She says she only cares about what it costs us. His actions. His actions. Yes, that's right. Um, there's, a, there's there's no future. Then why are we here? Right, but, we're talking about hope. Okay, at a moment here though, she made a very subtle gesture where she touched her stomach. Yeah. And Tyrion noticed that, and he realized he's starting to put two and two together. It's like, if you think our family is destroyed, if you think there's no hope for the future, if you choose not to make the world a better place for any other reason other than your selfish intentions, what, and there's the moment, mm -hmm. why are we here talking? Why do you care about speaking to me? Why do you not strike me down and kill me now? Right. And he figures it out. You're pregnant. Right. As soon as it, as soon as it opened its mouth, because she seems to... Um... Who's she talking about here? It's, it's the white. The, the he said, white. as the, oh, the white yeah. charged towards me, all she thought of was protecting those that are dear to her, protecting her family. Right. Not herself. Well, and she, this is, again, where he was saying, oh, you're not trying to protect yourself. You're trying to protect the life that's growing within you. Right. So she's got that maternal instinct thing going on. Like, mm -hmm. oh, my baby. Um, yeah, which, which is good. Which I would really like someone in the comments to bring up the wood witch theory, the wood witch prophecy about her and eventual death to a younger brother. And that how many children she would have with a crown of gold. Was it three or four children? I thought... I, because this would be her fourth, right? I thought it was three, but I don't know. Marcella, Tommen, Joffrey, and, and this would be number four. Little Hank. Yes. Yeah, she's going to name it Hank. Or at Hank underscore Thompson, if she really cared. Mm-hmm. Twitter. <laughs> we'll link in the description. <laughs> <You, laughs> yeah. But the thing is, what I'm trying to get at is that depending on what the Wood Witch said, whether she would have three or four children, if the Wood Witch said three, then she will likely die before she gives birth. Oh, yeah. Right. All right. So we got that to look forward to. Yes. <laughs> okay. So then we cut to some bones. Dragon that, bones. Are they all dragon bones? Little tiny baby dragon bones. The That's, ones that were no bigger than the size of a chicken. I don't know. That looks like a human knee. That could be one, something one of the dragons were eating. Maybe they probably they... did feed. But we can see like the little like eye sockets here and the teeth. We'll see a little bit more of it. Yeah. We'll be able to deduce that these are small. Like the skull right there, you can see the upper teeth. Yeah, I know. But also all animals have... I'm not... I get it. I just think they, they kind of took a little shortcuts with these dragon skulls. No, in the context of the show, they're supposed to be dragon bones. Right, but that looks like just any old cow head. Well, uh, of course, goat yeah. Goat heads and stuff. I mean, they're going right. to... Yeah. I mean, you grew up in Virginia. You've seen goat skulls, right? Oh, yeah. We yeah. used to wear them to school. Yeah, of course. On your shoulders and on your head. Yeah, it was required uh, in uniform. Bleh, I'm James. I'm here for second grade. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so John's holding one. He's fingering it, you might say. Uh, having a good time. Um, these two are having a nice little moment. I do like that she's got a scarf She's got half a cape. Yeah. You would think nice those would look. all be gone by now, though. The dragon bones? Yeah, I mean, if you were a kid living in King's Landing, wouldn't you sneak over there trying to get like collect dragon bone trinkets and things uh, like that? That'd yeah. be pretty cool. Shit, I a would A long-lost, extinct, mythical creature? I'd love to have a goat skull, yeah. let alone a dragon skull. Yeah, totally. Like, this whole place is it's nothing but an archaeologist's wet dream. Mm -hmm. All these artifacts sitting around, everything. So you can do all kinds of studies and stuff. But they just treat it like it's their own house. I think we're like that with our own stuff. This stupid monitor I'm looking at right here. Oh, that's a great monitor. But someday there's going to be some archaeologists looking at this thing going, hmm, humans, humans, the ancients, the ancients. We are the ancients. And they're going to turn around ancients. and whip a boulder. Yeah, whip a boulder. A future boulder. boulder. A, a boulder? Whip, yeah, whip Indiana a, Jones, archaeologist. Oh, whip a boulder. Got it. I was a little lost of that. But okay, run away from a boulder too. Yeah. And uh, All right, so anyway. Uh, so she's saying, this place was the beginning of the end for my family. So mm -hmm. it's almost as though her family was constrained, beaten down, driven out, almost shrunk because they were confined in exile, which is a well is synonymous the, with what happened the here. The family was in charge. Yes, that is, but they didn't. the time frame is a little different than what, you're, what I think you might have meant. I'm talking say. about it from a symbolic nature. Yeah, yeah. But she, right. But they, 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 to acquiesce the people that were afraid of the dragons, they locked them up, and that's what caused their demise. But yes, it, it did also happen to the family once that process. Yeah. Okay, yeah, fair. Okay, all right. Sorry, I'm not even sure what I was correcting. To be honest, I'm, I should never talk anymore. Um, and then they locked them in here. So like, we didn't, we weren't sure if this whole place was closed over, and it seems like that they were, or they were no, chained we, down. We talked probably. about that a little bit earlier. You and I did. Yeah. Yeah, before we started recording. No, we did it in here too, saying it looked like a coliseum, that it was dragon and melted by dragon fire, possibly, or it was just destroyed over yeah, the Yeah, but ages. we didn't talk about whether or not they were, they were uh, kept in there, or yeah, if it did. was just a landing. No, we didn't. We did. We did not. We absolutely did. We absolutely did before we started recording. No, we did it twice. We did it when we started recording, we're and we doing did it, it again. the show. We're doing it again, because we did not do it we during did. this video. I, uh, I promise you. I promise you we did. All right, fair enough. So what we didn't talk about earlier was, did they lock them down, or was this Coliseum thing closed over? 
I did say that. Yeah. You said that earlier? Yeah, I said that possibly they left the top open so they could fly out, and when they were kept within, they were chained down. All right. Well, hopefully I'm wrong, and uh, the other thing is I'm probably wrong. All right, so <laughs> here we go. Danny, uh, there she is looking at him. <laughs> this is, the, is this supposed to be a dragon skull? Nice yeah, thick obviously bones. a dragon skull. Yeah, it'd be weird if they're just like, here's your teeth. goat, here's your cat skull. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to think of me every time you touch it. Um, look at that sharp-ass little glove right there, James. That's just part of the fabric, I think. Just, yeah, that's okay. She's not really up to something with that, like, like a cat, cat woman. Yes. Um, all right, so he takes it, and they, they almost touch fingers. Ooh, that would have been pretty good. And your family, you notice how he's not, he's, he's moving in a little bit. He's not over here. He could be. Uh, I would be, because I'm terrified of women. He's um, talking about his wing again. My wing, and your family hasn't seen its end. It's got a long end. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, so, uh, wing. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Call it what it is. His sword. Dinger. Um, if I had trusted you, everything would be... So she's basically saying, we. I should have listened to you. I didn't trust you, and I lost my dragon, and now here we are fucking fighting, farting around with Cersei. So uh, she's, she's saying, I trust you now, and I wish I had earlier, and it's too yeah. bad. You know, This is a reconciliation moment between Daenerys and Jon. Yeah, it's nice. Um, she, they do look at each other as equals. They are the right height, too, by the way, for being a couple. But she did say that she uh, could not be with him because he's too small. True, true. But She I, likes the big barbarian guys. Like you said in the books, Jorah Mormont was called the bear. But, he was a big dude. But she didn't really ever... T- she, Dario she, Noharis, big dude. Drogo, Drogo, da, 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 Cal Drogo, big dude. Aquaman. He's yes. huge, uh, but she didn't take to draw more in the book. She wasn't like, oh, well, no, but she, 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 he liked she, her. Yeah, it was always one sided, right? But she established she never looked at him and said that he was too small for her. She accepted him as a potential suitor, but never acquiesced right. to use but the she, word you use but she, she to his remote, romantic advances. Yes, right. Never did. Nor does her. Therefore, her opinion on his fitness for her doesn't matter because it never, it never came into question. But anyway, point is. She's accepting that a little short guy like John. I'm saying they're the right height. Look what lip, lip. When they get when they lean in to kiss, they neither of them have to bend over. I'm saying height doesn't matter, obviously, because she's been with a lot of giant barbarian dudes. I'm six foot three, a little bit under, and it fucking kills me every day. I've dated girls that were like five two ish occasionally. Every once in a while, I get one real short. Man, that's awkward when you go in for the kiss. You feel like a giant monster. Just kiss the top of their head. Just this hulking maniac. Oh, come here, you. <laughs> just leaning in on him. It's really weird. You, tall, I'm just saying there's a nice thing when your heads line up. Not that, I, although I don't want a girl taller than me because that just would freak me out. I, six foot four girl? Come on, what am I? <laughs> Brienne of Tarth. <laughs> well, yeah. Although I would totally. Actually, no, I've never, never anybody. I've, I've, girls over six feet, they're, they're huge. They're just, I mean, they're wonderful. I mean, don't get me wrong. But like when you're, okay, now I'm starting to sound like I'm being a real piece. I'm just, the short, short girls, and you're, when you're tall and you're kissing a short chick, it feels fucked up. You feel like you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Even when she wants you to. She's got to lean up all awkward. It's horrible. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's keep going here. Um, okay. So Tyrion. So then they're just like, oh, yeah, these people are fucking crazy. These, uh, you know, look at that look. She's They're into each other. These, these actors have good chemistry, I, I think. I think that's nice. You know who has better chemistry? Uh, John Ritter and, and uh, Problem Child Kid. Kyburn, because he uses science and not magic. <laughs> You can't allow for magic to be involved in science at all. Never. Not in the Game of Thrones world. No. Uh, all right. So Tyrion comes walking by. I think they're all surprised to see him. That they're he's all, alive. Yeah. After his encounter with his sister. That he's, he's made it. And they're like, whoa, whoa, let's go check it out. What's going on, Tyrion? So they run up to him. The queen comes back, though. I don't think they expected this at all. Kyburn. Yeah, she's in pursuit of Tyrion. He's yeah. escaping very slowly. They do a slow. This is how they do it in, in games. No wonder he keeps getting away. God, we've yeah. got so much more to go through. So, sorry. I... All right, so she walks up and uh, she immediately announces, she drops the bomb on everybody. She goes, we are in agreement. You have yourselves a deal. I'm not pulling, all right? We're all going to do this thing. We're going to fight the North. And everybody's like, damn, shit. I didn't expect this at all. So we'll face it together, which sounds a lot more inclusive and uh, we are the world than I think I would have ever expected Cersei to say. Mm-hmm. And when the Great War is over, you'll remember I was there to help. So it's like she begging for their approval. Well, she's, she's very out of character for I Cersei. think she's basically saying that once it's all over and we've achieved victory in the North and we know that you two are conspiring together against me, remember that I chose to help and don't right. crush me and destroy yes. my family name. Which seems like a reasonable hope, um, but it, coming from her, she's not. She's never been one to be like, oh, if you don't mind. But she's please. even like snarling when she says it. A little, yeah. She's very confident. Um, yeah, 
So, right. So they're like, all right, yes, we're doing it. I expect not. I don't know what they're talking about there. Some, oh yeah. So then she tells the guy, get the banners. We're doing this. We're having a war. Pretty good, huh, James? Yeah. I mean, I, I never trust her, but <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, why would you trust her? But you know, uh, at least we've made some progress on this agreement here. We're not just yeah. going to sit around like so a fucking something... Star Wars Episode One, where they're going to have conferences in the Senate or some bullshit like that. Yeah. So events were set into motion by this meeting. Yeah. So wind howling, caw, 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 birds, and we're flying over to Winterfell. Sa- Sansa is having. Uh, perhaps John tried to send... Where, who's she talking? She's talking to Littlefinger here? Right, yeah. Yeah, so uh, this is Littlefinger speaking, right? Um, this is the way he is. He never asked for my opinion. Why we start now? Oh, they're finding yeah. out that the that John he's bent is, the knee. Yes, he bent the knee. So this is a big deal for them because they're being informed that they're no longer really calling the shots now that he's given, you know... Right. Essentially, the, the, whatever John was worried about ramifications-wise is starting starts with this. Right, and Littlefinger is doing what Littlefinger does best. He finds a crack somewhere, he sticks this Littlefinger wedge in, and he starts hammering on it. Mm-hmm. So he's now trying to draw a wedge, again, to use the word, between Jon Snow, or Jon Stark, or Jon Targaryen, yep. whatever one it turns out to be, and Sansa by saying, if he's doing things without your consent, if he's doing things that are against the interests of the North and those who have put their loyalty in him, then perhaps it's time to unname him as king and for you to become queen of the North. Right. Yeah, like John doesn't have to be the boss. Why don't mm-hmm. you become the boss? And uh, and she's 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 like Arya would never agree to it. Arya's very loyal to John. She died, she'd kill anyone who betrayed her family, um, which is actually a really important statement from her right now. Now that I'm thinking about it, pinky ring. Oh, uh, god, two of them. He's got way too many rings. Maximum for men, two. He's got two pinky rings on. On he's got two pinkies. Has a, well, of course he has two pinkies. I only see like one pinky ring though. Which pinky? Are you not looking at both pinkies? I don't. Oh, okay, I see it now. Do you want me to help you get your eyes checked? I've you told can't. you this a million times. you want to switch seats and see how impossible it is to see from yeah. here? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. Well, now that you know it's already there. Now that I'm stepping over, yeah, uh, literally, uh, my head's going to be literally two feet away. Now I'll even lean back. You see how much? Absolutely, so... I can see it. A hundred percent. Because you know it's there. No, because I can look at his finger. <sighs> I just think you're a terrible liar. What are you talking about? You're calling me a liar? Yes. What are you... What would I... Wait, because it's... you know it's there. Why would you use the word liar in this situation? That is so You're unhelpful. Lying to me, James. I'm I, I'm willing to give you a ride to the doctor to get your eyes checked. I think you. I have twenty twenty vision. I well, not according to me. All right, so here we go. Would Arya really murder her own sister? Is that something that could possibly happen? I can't believe you called me a liar. I'm offended. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the Jon Snow of not lying. You knew the ring was there. What's that got to do with it? I could see it. The point wasn't whether I know it's there. It's whether I can you see the fucking ring. And that's yes. not the ring I'm talking about. I'm talking about the other ring. Oh, that's the one you yes. had a hard time seeing? Oh, well, now we got to do the experiment all over it's again. It's like concealed in shadow from this angle of the monitor. That one's obvious and easy to see. It's the other one that's not easy to see. I still think it's easy to see. I don't, I'm not, it's not a judgment. It's Everything's a concern. easy to see when you know it's there. I'm not judging you. I'm concerned that you might be missing out on the splendor that is Earth. Uh, you, I, you've, that means you don't look... When you see me, you see a bald... Uh, you see blurry. We've been over this so many times. You are sitting direct... This is an IPS monitor. The viewing yeah. angle is not great. That's actually not true. The viewing angle is good on IPS monitors. Not this particular one. I'm moving it around. Yeah, and I can see the viewing I think, angles I, changing. I, I just would... I'm just letting you know, when you decide to care about yourself... I will take you to the doctor so you can have your eyes checked out. And then you we, deserve it. And then we can have an eye off, and then we can see exactly who has better vision. I have perfect vision under six feet. I wear glasses for farsa or for whatever that, however that works out. So it's perfect for me. I'm not judging you. I want to help you. You're frustrated because the, it's not. It's not a persuasive case. It's the case. viewing angle of the monitor. All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll have to settle that one in the ring. Let's keep going. Would Arya really murder her own sister? Uh, yeah, well, we know. So he, he's, he's, he's planting in her mind the idea that Arya is very capable of doing this kind of cr- cr- criminal mm-hmm. activity, right? I don't trust godly men, and Arya was really super religious. She's all nutty and stuff, and you better be careful. Um, so, yeah, he's pretty persuasive, though. She seems to be really buying what, what he's selling, right? Yeah, and he's going to tell her the little game that he plays in order to assess the motives of a person. Right. What's the worst thing they can do? What actions have they done to get it? Uh, the, yeah. I forget what the third one is. But the last one is, what do they stand to gain from it? Something like that, yeah. And she realizes, so man, she could want me dead. 
because I she thinks I betrayed the family, and she's basing off that one little letter thing. Why? She had. Yeah, and then why did she take an action? Why did she come to Winterfell to kill you? Yeah, to provide proof of my betrayals and uh, to provide justice after she murders me. What does she become? Oh, the Lady of Winterfell. Dun dun dun. Could it be? Do you think Arya wants to be the Lady James? No, I don't think so at all. Because if you recall back to the times where Arya was talking to Ned Stark. There was a scene in King's Landing where Ned was saying, and you, just like Sansa, will marry a prince, you will sit upon a throne, you will have beautiful children, you will live a life of luxury. And she looks at his, her father and says, no, that's not me. The same line that she, she says to Nymeria when she asks Nymeria to come back to, to Winterfell with her, and she realizes that Nymeria is not uh, a, a lapdog. It is, she's right. wild and free, and she's with her pack. Right. She says, no, that's not you. So Arya absolutely does not want that. Yeah, I think it's... And, and Sansa knows that. But Littlefinger is pretty persuasive. Right. You know, he's, so, he's, he's survived quite well and done quite well for himself doing exactly what he's doing now, which is manipulating powerful people into uh, fearing each other. Yeah, from all yeah. appearances, it seems as though Littlefinger's plot is working mm -hmm. admirably. Yep. And at this point, I said, that's it. Winterfell will be burnt down. The girls are going to have a big wrestling match. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it'll, it'll be like an episode of Glow. Yeah. <laughs> Rawr! Take that and... Uh, man, that's a great show. Um, okay, waves crashing. Boom, we're at Dragonstone. So now, Jon Snow, that's him right here. This is Jon Snow. He's giving a whole thing. They're kind of doing logistic stuff for the armies. Like, all right, you guys come up here. We'll meet you here. And we'll, you can take the Dothraki. You'll drive here. There's a nice in and out burger along the way. Hit a rest stop. Hit up a K&A &A camping ground, and you'll all be good. Uh, he'll see your silver. And then, oh, yeah, they're worried that uh, she'll be a target for assassins that would want to earn the glory of murdering this uh, usurper. Right? right, so they're saying that they need to create the impression in the north that Daenerys Targaryen and the king in the north are truly allies because they travel together. They're not simply allies in tone or story. They have to be seen together. Right. And the risk of traveling along the road instead of flying your dragons everywhere is obviously an assassin could kill you, but it's worth the risk because it's going to build trust in the north and you need the support of the northern houses in order to have any chance of success. Yes. And she's saying, I'm not coming to conquer the north, I'm coming to save the north. Which is a nice line. Yeah. That's nice of her to say that. Um, right. And uh, he's in love. Oh, look at those eyes. He so wants it. Uh, and uh, he hates him for, for he goes, oh, she's going to. All right. So now I'm getting all this right. But yes, you're totally right. So they, they do kind of agree. Optics matter. We need to be seen together. So that's what we're going to do. And viewing angles matter. Viewing angles matter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> trust me. I was completely correct. You're, you're, that's nonsense, the viewing angle thing. We're, our heads are literally two feet apart. That's not enough of an, a difference to make a difference in the viewing angle, even if that made a difference. You were looking at the wrong ring the entire time, though. The other one was just as visible. <sighs> Both were extremely you know, visible. When you know it's there. Moving on. All right, fair enough. I, uh, let us know in the comments, everybody. Was Hank right or was James wrong? <laughs> they can't step through the monitor and sit where we're sitting. <laughs> I wish they could. <laughs> um, okay, so there's that John and Davos, and then they get interrupted by Theon. We, we can get, get through this real quick here. Uh, Theon is like, oh, yeah, something about bending the knee. We so went the, down. The last time Theon and John encountered each other was on the shore. Theon was not expecting to go to Dragonstone and see John there, and he was kind of afraid of John because he knew that he tried to take Winterfell in the name of his father, in the name of the Greyjoys, to bring honor and acceptance to of himself to his father and to his house. Right. So he basically murdered the maester there. He murdered other people. He strung up and burned two little boys' bodies trying to pretend that they were Rickon and Bran. Mm -hmm. And John did not take too kindly to that, nor should he have. Agreed. He said, the only reason I'm not killing you now is because of what you did for Sansa. So now, Theon is trying to have a moment with him, saying, I've done some terrible things. And he's essentially asking for forgiveness, in a way. Right. Like, how, do, how do I get past where I am currently? They always have these... He's got a lot of regrets, right? Yeah. Uh, there he is, things that I regret. You know what John doesn't have? Uh, John doesn't a have... A egret. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. That's like he's he's been living life with no egrets. Yes, um, <laughs> for a very long time. <laughs> Poor guy. Everybody needs to find their egret. Um, not compared to you. So yeah, they're, they're just doing having a regret off here or a little. Well, bit. no, he was kind of giving him a, a cold shoulder. There is he saying is like you. Yeah, yours are worse than. Yeah, he says yeah. you. Every single step you make is the right step. And John's like, no, from the outside it might look like that, but that's not true. I do have regrets. And he goes, yeah, but you don't have as many as I do. And he goes, no, not compared to you. Yeah. For sure. Um, so Theon See, Theon has a, a, a challenged decision making. He's just sort of a dumbass. He shouldn't really be making, calling the shots anywhere. 
like there was an impossible choice I had to make Stark. So he's always struggled with this his identity here. And to go back to the conversation that Braum was having with Jamie, it seems like the decisions he's made have been a lot more astute without his little friend. Whose decisions? Beyond's. Oh, he makes better choices without the yes. cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> he does. Yeah. Yeah, wieners get you in trouble. They are they are real annoying. I could do with some erectile dysfunction. Personally, I'm fucking tired of these boners. It's been fucking 25 years. It's not one of these things going to go away. <laughs> you should ask your doctor. <laughs> James, I asked my doctor if, uh, if, uh, if I'm healthy enough for sex, and she told me to quit texting her. Yes. But um, <laughs> I, um, I like that that's one. That's one of my lines. I've heard that one before one from you, bullshit. but I like it. Yeah, I know. I'm sad. I hate, it feels terrible to repeat jokes but okay sorry so anyway oh i'm so sad i'm thinking my face quivers oh. um is the handsome he's kind of a lumpy face he looks like he looks like a british like a like a like a 1970s rock star british guy like an early rolling stones handsome like he has that sort of lumpy british face lumpy british fa- yeah. what I'm, I'm part british i'm allowed to say that <laughs> okay but um, the, the important thing that was kind of glossed over here is that yeah. he's saying that he never belonged to any place he wasn't truly a stark he wasn't truly a Greyjoy. joy because how do i choose to figure out who i am and john says you don't need to choose uh ned is a part of me just as much as it's a part of you so you are both a Greyjoy joy and you are a stark you don't need to choose you're both right and then he says say, yara needs him and john says something like yeah that's what you should be going and doing i don't know well he Maybe. says that he betrayed his sister his sister was the only person who ever tried to save him and that he betrayed her by not trying to save her and that she needs him. He goes, well, if that's true, then why are you wasting your time talking to me? Right. So basically saying, you know what to do. Go yeah. save your sister. Yeah, buddy. redeem yourself. So Theon has a mission now. There's, there's, there's his purpose here. He's ready to go have a fight. And, and John uh, even says something to the effect of, it's, it's not my place to forgive you for all that you've done, but for what I can forgive, I forgive you. There you go. Yeah, exactly. All right, so then we're here. We are with uh, what are these? The, yeah, these are the Great Joys. This is the uh, guys that the, that had rescued Theon, and uh, they're giving him a bunch of uh, shit. Theon comes up. I, I kind of thought he would come in and just immediately assert his dominance because he found a new heart and like a new, yeah. a new kind of uh, rah rah attitude. But, yeah, and you think um, he's nervous coming in there because I noticed his hand is doing something really weird. Yeah, you can see the fi- well. That hand looks weird. The fingers are like all yeah weirdly weirdly it's held. almost though he's tensed up in a very odd way because it does seem kind of like that doesn't it she's not dead yeah she, 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 like, like we gotta go get yara like nah she's dead she's not dead blah 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 she's your queen you left her to die fuck you i ran for my uncle so they're all upset and uh right. but these guys don't give a crap about him he's just a nobody right. and what did what did they say when they first pulled him out of the water after they first found him you're a coward yeah he said that uh he said i tried to save him he goes no you didn't try and save her and he goes if you had tried to save her you'd be dead right so they respect one thing. They respect bravery, they respect power, and they respect confidence, really. Yes, and he hasn't shown much of any of that. No, so he's yeah. pretty much a worm in their eyes. Right, a worm, exactly. Uh, kill all the men. To, and so the, their plan is to go find a, a little island and, and take over. Yeah, because they can't go back to the Iron Islands because Euron's in control over there. And for all they know, he's sailing back to the Iron Islands right now to wait out the winter. So right. he'll kill them if they show up there because he's still loyal to Yara. Yes. So these guys are paid, they have no country essentially. So yeah. they're, 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 their idea is to just get out and be uh, rapists and um, what do you call that? Uh, pillagers. Pill- pillagers. That's what, yeah. Rapists and and uh, Theon says, "Remember, you were, you know, loyal to Yara, and Yara vowed to end those way of life. So right. we're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. We're going to go and save her." And but they spit upon him. Spits on him. You thinking he just really spits on him? I feel like actors would go for it. Like if you're in a Probably. top top level show like this, you'd be like to the other guy, like, oh, "Yeah, just spit on me. I don't. It's fine. I'll take it. It's, I'm acting. We're acting." It was a man in a blue spandex suit with a little spray bottle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Windex is bright, <laughs> bright, bright blue liquid, and they, they make don't, it look like spray. they can just off camera, but they choose to yeah. CGI him out because it's more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dan wipes it off, and then the guy just punches him. He needs to shut this down. Ah, get him. And so then, then they, the Stan starts getting his ass kicked. This dude's, you know, sailors usually have pretty strong muscles and stuff. Hitting him, punching him, take that, Theon, rah, men are joking around, and uh, Theon does try to fight back a little bit, but doesn't do a great job. Theon, the guy grabs him by his shoulders, goes, ah, and leans back, headbutts him real hard in the face. That always looked like that would hurt. I'm glad I've never been headbutted other than by my fucking brothers. Uh, that's but, more like that men yeah. laughing, ha ha. Theon's no stranger to pain, though. He's taking a lot of stuff in his time. Yeah, and speaking of headbutting, he um, is down one head, you know what I mean? And so he's he's dealt with a lot of pain here. Still ah. has, he still has his butt, though. That's true. <laughs> Um, the guy is getting a little tired, weirdly, which is strange. But just Theon like just Conor keeps McGregor. getting up for more. Yep, exactly. Con- Conor McGregor put up a good fight. I he did. I was, I was impressed by him. Yeah, 
I Bo- wanted to boxing see him win, is very but, tiring. It's yeah. you get tired after about a minute of that shit. These guys are going for a long time. So grunts and ah, they fight some, and Theon keeps getting beat up. Can't really seem to to do much here. But I think this is pretty pretty expected. Everybody sort of saw what was coming happen. Uh, you know, I don't think anyone saw this coming. Wait, what happened? Now? What <laughs> he starts kneeing him in the groin. Oh yeah, I forgot about that part. So he starts kneeing him over and over. <laughs> Doesn't the guy know the story of Theon? Doesn't he know that there's nothing there? But Theon just keeps taking it. Here's the thing: your balls are what hurts when you get kneed. And he doesn't have any. What do you mean? I thought he only has penis cut. Oh, off. He got a lot taken. They took everything. I think they did. Yeah. So what's there? Just like a hole, just like a scar tissue with a hole in it. I prefer not to think of it in great detail, but yeah. Well, that's pretty much all you did. I don't remember his balls being part of the conversation. Um, I feel like he would have left the ball. I think it's crueler to leave the balls, to just have the fucking sad balls here. That's like leaving a painting. That's like leaving the frame on the wall. Well, take, if that were the case, the he would absolutely feel this. That's my point. So maybe he doesn't have his balls. I, I think this is confirmation that he doesn't. All right. Confirmation. No balls. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see what was in the box. <laughs> that's true. They never showed it. <laughs> the balls. Yeah, that's where the pain. I mean, I don't want, I don't want old, uh old spongy bat to get any da- damage either but that thing is made to take a little beating i mean come on everybody's that's why we call it beating <laughs> those things that thing can actually handle some impact it's there's no you know it's you know the balls are where the where the wizard spell lands and you go oh god no you just call them orbs then orbs thank you i had a soccer ball hit me once and it just grazed it it just went pe- and it just like tapped it and, I, and it takes about 10 seconds before it starts to go through and you start to go uh uh, uh, and you kind of crumple over. I've never taken a full-on kick. Oh, I played rugby. That was uh, pretty close a bunch of times. All right, so um, uh, take that. Uh, so Leon, Theon then just hits him and starts beating him up and wins the fight. Takes over and just, you know, once you find out a guy can't be hurting his balls, because he doesn't have any, presumably, mm-hmm. uh, then they, you immediately become a complete wimp and get your ass kicked. Yes. Like, why the fuck did that work? You're like, what is this sorcery? <laughs> And all his strength is sapped away, and then oh. Theon magically is able to subdue him and beat him into the sand. So Theon's going to wear some assless chaps and just walk around with his empty Ken doll groin poking around everywhere, mm-hmm. uh, taking blows to the balls every time like he gets swung at, and he just like move, maneuvers himself he up it. like <laughs> Cirque du Soleil, just to get down there to his, uh, in, you know... My most heavily armored... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have no crit spot! <laughs> It's like, come what the fuck? So anyway, Theon turns the tide. The tides have turned on the bad guy. And Theon it, beats his ass. And, and, and as we learn from these people during Euron's coronation, this is what they respect. He is now their leader. Right. He he, he beat their leader, and now they'll just follow him. And they're ready to chant, Yara, yeah. Yara. Yeah. <laughs> they're so freaking turncoat. Yara, Tamara, Yara, Tamara. See, they're going to get her tomorrow. Um, yeah. But Theon has got the power. Now he is He's off on his mission. So great, great. Big, well, wonderful. Theon's back. And this was a shot from the trailer where it shows him walking past the boat and then collapsing right, right there. there. Yeah. And I, I thought when I saw the trailer for this that Yara's body was in the boat and he was shaming himself, collapsing, taking her back to the Iron Islands to bury her. Okay. Or to give her a burial at sea as the Ironborn do. Yeah, I just when I saw this, I just assumed he lost his contact lens. Mm-hmm. JK, I don't watch trailers. I hate previews. I think they're spoilers. Um, all right, so then there he is taking a little sip. They give you something to speculate on. That's my favorite part of shows. Yeah, but they also tell you what's coming, and that's... Well, clearly f- not in this case. My this, favorite... This shot was more impressive to me and was more special to me because my speculation about it was t- proven wrong, and I love yeah. when that happens. So this this seeing it beforehand added more to it for me. Because your assumptions were completely wrong. Right, and I wanted him to be wrong. I right. wanted Yara to be alive. I wanted Yara not to be dead here, and she wasn't. So it was like, heck yes. Oh, boy. Hey, it sure takes all kinds, huh, everybody? Huh? We are the world. All right, go fuck yourself. All right, so here we go. <laughs> the uh, world loves previews. <laughs> no, it doesn't. There's spoilers. When I become king, you can only make trailers out of the first half hour of a movie. Yes. So it's just like Ben Affleck talking to some woman. Yeah, that's why when you go to the movie theater, everyone stands up and leaves when the preview starts. I'm not trying to talk anybody else out of it. I'm just telling no, you, you what do. I think. You, you do. You, you actually leave. I literally do. You do, yeah. Yeah. And no one else does. But I don't do I... that for all previews. I do it for, uh, I try to go pee because I want to have an empty bladder before the movie because I'm really, really fussy about having to piss during movies. <laughs> okay. I'm fun to be around, everybody. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go and skip all the previews. I watch previews. You walk down on a couple of them. That's because I go pee. What I do is I put my head down and I put my thumbs in my ears and I go la 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 la. No, no, that's, that's not my view. But I do. I will actually try to avert my eyes if it's something. If like if it's like a Christopher Nolan film. Mm-hmm. Come on, James. Who wants to see fucking? It's like reading a sentence from every chapter of a book. 
before reading the book. Sorry, not interested. But also don't give a fuck if I persuade anybody else. That's just how I feel. All right, here we go. Another trailer shot. See, I did not know that. Um, Sansa wearing a wearing a costume here, uh, looking looking good and everything. And there she goes walking around. <laughs> she actually looked pretty she, funny. She gives the guy <laughs> this here. Yeah, yeah. Like this is like a skee ball game. <laughs> Hit her in the face, <laughs> get one hundred. Hit her in the side, you get fifty. What she tells him to do something though. She says, "Oh, get our summon Arya." Yeah, I want Arya in, in the uh, in my chamber because she just in, had in the, the hall. Yeah, she just had this big long discussion with Littlefinger, in which Littlefinger painted her as a threat. Right. And now she has all the Knights of the Vale standing along the aisle. You know, yeah. basically this is an, an executioner chamber, it, it seems. It's very imposing to march yeah. anybody in while all these men with their weapons are standing around waiting. Right. You know, that's that's not, uh, yeah, that looks like trouble. And Arya even says, so you really want to do this, do you? Yeah. Looking around as though she's fully aware of what this is, that the conniving nature of Littlefinger has won over the mind of Sansa, right. and she's going to take horrible actions against her own sister. This would be pretty shocking for her to take to take down Arya here. But And uh, could Arya beat these dudes? I don't know. Absolutely not. <laughs> not that many. She could probably take down like ten of them. She's Arya. She'd be dead in seconds. Even well, not unless one of them has a basket of oranges. Yeah. <laughs> in which case, or she's only, going down. There's only three other things that would possibly uh, she could use to buy some time. Uh, Valor Mogorlis. <laughs> Oyster clams and cockles. Oh, yeah, <laughs> You're really entertained by that whole thing. I love it. <laughs> okay, yeah, you wouldn't eat an oyster. You're coming to the seafood debate again, but that's okay. Would you eat a cockle? I don't even know what that is. You said cockle. I heard you swear. That's not a swear. I know. I kid. That I defend my family from those who would avoid environment. So, so yeah, Littlefinger is like, whoa, my plan's he, fucking working. He's eating it up. He's like, I'm the master manipulator. Yeah, he, he thinks he's, this is a big victory for him. And she tells her, you stand accused of murder. You stand accused of treason. And I even, and I even said, I was like, who? Who did she murder? I don't. Now, did you? When did you figure it out? I mean, and she turns here. I, tr- I figured it out right here because I'm a master detective. Right when she said Lord Bailey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brand's head. I mean, the other guy behind him. All their heads turn. Watch. So I'll just go. Burr, Baelish, Baelish, Baelish. Yeah. So that's Baelish. She was talking to. Yes. Baelish. It takes him a moment to like process it too. Littlefinger has always shielded himself behind deception and manipulation, and placed himself in a position of unreachable scrutiny. Yeah. So this is the first time he is laid bare before those with power. Yes. He's never been in this position before. And he is um, t- completely shocked here. He doesn't really know what to do. And he, Arya. <laughs> yes. She knew going into it that this was all about Baelish. It was never about her. Yeah. So this is a setup. Arya mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and Sansa, they had some off-camera meetings. Right. And all this time that Littlefinger thought that he was playing them by planning the note for Arya to find, by having these conversations with Sansa in privacy... All this time, they were, like you said, behind his back, playing him against his own assumptions of his own... I can't even say this right. He's, it's fine. They're, they're uh, deceiving him. Yes. Yes. And he didn't pick up on it. Which And she, <laughs> she's just like, which, oh yeah, what, what confuses you, huh? You murdered... So she just lays it all out. I think This I is something... There was a secret between her and him. She was the only one who knew that. Yeah. And why is it important that she reveals this particular thing? Because she's standing here with the Knights of the Vale. That, yes. was, that was their leader. Yeah. So they're obviously going to care about that. Big time. And, and yeah, and that one guy that's like the, the captain of the Knights of the Veil guy, uh, you mm-hmm. push her through the moon door and watched her fall. You didn't even mm-hmm. walk, you know, by, by, why does that matter? Kids. Sir Robin of Aaron should be there. So. <laughs> yeah, that weird kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he doesn't deny anything. And he actually says, yeah, I did it to protect you earlier. You conspired. And then the, all these other crimes that he's yeah. committed against Work. the target, against the Starks. John Aaron being Lysa's husband, which he gave the poison to to kill. Mm-hmm. Yep, and he starts to sort of turn into a sniveling little wimp, begging for his life. Not yet. Oh, he not says yet. that she was a troubled woman. He's still trying to weave his excuses. Weave his excuses, yes. And uh, your aunt Lysa sent a letter to her parents, just, just listing all the ways that the, they manipulated. Uh, he manipulated them. Mm-hmm. When it was really you, it was you who started it, you piece of shit. I know of, he, he denies knowing about this letter. This is the big one. These are the mm-hmm. big Joffrey Baratheon to betray our father, Ned Stark. So this is when he put the knife to Ned Stark's throat. Right, but no one knew about that aside from Lord Baelish and Ned Stark himself. Right, right. And so he denies that one Mm -hmm. because he doesn't think that they know. But none of you are here to see that's not quite true. His, His, all of his deceptions involve doing things in privacy away from prying eyes. Yes, but what they don't know is that they've got... Raisin Bran. They've got Raisin Bran here. (laughs) This guy is the... There's like a website. There's websites that archive all the web pages. Like no matter what, you can always find mm-hmm. every every edition. <laughs> like this is him. This is he gets on the Weirwood Wide Web and he knows what the fuck is up. 
So there's no more real uh, debating this here now. Um, you told our mother that Snipe belonged to Tyrion Lannister, but that was another one of your lies. Yeah, he's pretty much already been beaten at this point, but they're just laying the evidence on more and more. Yeah. And there is no Johnny Cochran here to save him. Right? <laughs> no, not at all. And the gloves already fit. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, he even tries, like, can I talk to you in person? And then, come on, I need to talk to you in private. Yes, yeah. it's a lot easier to manipulate you with all these people watching. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so then she turns this around. She uses the whole his game. own words. So this little game about assuming the words. And that's when he knows he's really beat. I mean, he's he already knows he's beat, he's beat here. But what's the worst reason you have for turning me against my sister? Well, that's what you've always said. Turn against family against family. Sister against sister. Uh, and that's what you try to do to us. Well, uh, it's, this is kind of like it shows a nice bit of self. Yeah, I, I enjoy this. Not that she lacks self awareness, but you know, I'm a slow learner. Like, yeah, I I know, but I learn. I, I'm not stupid. Um, so he tries to pull rank. Then this is this his is desperation his, move. Yep, he goes over to that that one guy here. That's him right there. That's the night of the Valley. He sounds mm -hmm. a little like this. And uh, the guy's like, no, nah, sorry, pal. Not doing it. And this is the sniveling begging that I was referring to. Yeah. Earlier. First time you This like, is what I've done right away. This has been my my opening move. And I don't think even this is genuine. I think to the to the very point here, he is playing a role. I he is, right. you know, nothing about him is genuine. Not even a little bit. I loved you. And that's why you sold her, huh? And, and yet you betrayed me. Right. Lots of betrayal going on. You told me there's no justice in the yeah, world. Yeah, she says, like, yeah, I loved your mother more than anything, and yet you betrayed her. I loved you, and yet you betrayed me. Right. Thank uh, you for all your yeah. many lessons. I love that. Good lessons for the Baelish, and uh, she'll never forget them, and things are going to happen real soon here. Arya walks up, and, uh, boy, when you've got an assassin murderer person who's like, she's, she's not even... An assassin. She's got like a seminary degree. Like she's like a priest of assassination. Yeah. <laughs> she's whoa. That's what Arya does. She real quick. She just walks up, gives him the old swipe, and the blood squirts out. Poor this actress is going to need like therapy. Yes. Real now, do you think fun. afterwards she just like goes down to the ground and starts peeling his face off as he dies? I was hoping for that. Just starts just like cleaning him like you clean a deer. When you, when but this, you, but she the I, way I, she I, just I, turns around and puts her puts her knife away and just yeah. goes back to her standing where she was standing. I don't want to try and gloss over the significance of this moment. This character has been around since the very first season. This character is the one that I thought was going to last and actually end up on the Iron Throne for like a twist horrible ending he always gets what he wants he always manipulates he always comes out on top and now we're seeing this titan of this master of the game of thrones yeah finally meeting his end to a character sansa who was never really that like she said i'm a slow learner she was never a powerful person she was never an intelligent person but he himself taught her his ways and she turned them on him well put yeah totally oh yeah absolutely this is me having sex right there james that's the kind of Force I put into it all. Um, Yay. <laughs> but was there more to what you were saying there? Or no, 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 no. It's yeah. like he, he basically honed a sword and fell on it. Well done. And his sword is now the Lady of Winterfell. And he is going to turn into a um, frozen corpse of Winterfell. So fuck off. Yeah. Baelish, you're done. Yeah, they better burn him. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you don't need a blue eyed Baelish. <laughs> Clean up that floor and move on. We can all have a party, right? Uh, Arya is going to get a new face. Do you think Arya is going to turn up, turn up as Baelish, though? I, I would hope so. I, I like to see this actor appear again. She's got a fresh body right here. Man, how fucking weird it would be if all these dudes watching if this little girl comes over and just starts like like methodically yeah. cutting down the side of his head. And just put it on right there. <laughs> <laughs> she she <laughs> starts <laughs> dancing around. She pokes her tongue out of his lips and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Turns into and then starts manipulating Sansa, but it works. <laughs> and then jumps out the window with her wingsuit. <laughs> Throws somebody out of a... Yeah. <laughs> Flaps away. Um, all right, so... Okay, Cersei. Another trailer shot. See, I didn't see. This is all surprised me. This is why it's great. I don't read the middle of the It's pretty obvious who it sentence. is, though, because oh, yeah, of I the fuzzy shoulders and the Lego yeah. hair. Yeah, it's the guy from Oasis. I knew that. Um, yes. So we've got some logistics talks going on over here with uh, Jamie giving orders to his boys, telling them, all right, go here, get the thing. And they're right. like, oh, sir, we're gonna take, we need a fortnight to get ready. He's like, you got three days. Because what did she promise beforehand? The last thing she said to the group in Dragon's Pit. Uh, right. She said, um, we'll do this together. Yeah, she pledged the Lannister armies and all of her forces, all her bannermen, would march alongside Daenerys and Jon's armies to the north to fight the common enemy. Mm -hmm. And Jaime is making good on that. He's talking with his forces, trying to orchestrate this promise, this pledge that the Queen has given to the Northmen and to Daenerys. Right, right. He's following through with what mm -hmm. she said. And, uh, look at oh, your grace, yes, I have to bend their heads and stuff. Not all of them aren't, but, um... 
your grace blah, blah, blah. what are you doing preparing shit so she's like what what are you doing come on she calls him the stupidest Lannister yeah. well like I wish, what because he trusted her fuck you maybe you could have said hey, hey hey dude come over here yeah we're not actually gonna do it just don't waste anybody because now he's got these guys activated and he's got to pull them back from this mm -hmm. motion they should go part way they should do a little bit just to throw off the Daenerys's that's what the Daenerys's yeah the gang the, the Daenerys gang Daenerys and her and her stick em up boys <laughs> Uh, are you a traitor or an idiot? Well, why would you do that? I'll, I'll say whatever I need to say. All right, yeah, so... Um, she basically said, yeah, I was lying. Yeah, she was lying. This is Cersei's real self. Is she's, she's conniving and lying. And, hey, I get it, actually. She's, I don't know, you expect me to trust the man. She's like, fuck that, I'm not... She was doing what she needed to do to get rid of them, basically. Commander troops. But, and hope, hoping that they don't get wise to this before they... Like, she wants them to get weakened by the white and stuff so yeah uh you, I, you saw a dead man trying to kill it so he's trying he can't persuade her there's no talking her into it and even even not even the dothraki knows that there's no way that they well, can beat him yeah but she's saying i understand the threat of what the the white oh, imposed yeah. but one of two things could happen a we march with them up north and they kill us all and we die or they march up north without us they defeat the armies up there and then they come back and kill us and we die Right. So our best chance is just to stand back here and ma amass our forces using the one key that we still have left in this match, which is the Iron Bank and uh, the armies, the Golden Army, the Golden Company of Essos. Right, which she reveals pretty soon. Mm -hmm. She does refer to this whole child thing going like, yeah, we don't, uh, yeah, she's, you know, that's their plan is we need to keep the baby going, get the baby going so we mm -hmm. have an heir and that's that's our deal. Um, the White Walkers. There's, this is her saying all that stuff about not let that let the monsters kill each other. I like that. That mm. she's like, yeah, they're all monsters. Just let it's them like fight. The, the King Kong movie. Let them fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't remember that part at all. Um, yeah, it, was a, it was pretty much like the big trailer. Did Brian Cranston say seen. that? No, that's okay. Godzilla. That's I think. It, huh? He was in Godzilla. I'll oh, read. did I say King Kong? Yeah, I'm in Godzilla. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, okay, Godzilla. Yeah, with the guy, the nephew that never dies or something, whatever that fucking yeah. remake. Godzilla was cool, but the, some of the movies. All right, whatever. But when the fighting is in the north is over, someone wins, and then they come and kill us. Is what his point was. Yep. You've already kind of gone over all this mm -hmm. stuff real quick here. Marsh and Targaryens and Starks already want to kill us all. So what's he? so he's 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 afraid of everybody. And she brings up the point that I brought up originally in there that she recognizes that Daenerys brought two dragons. And she brought the full force of her army, which she deduces something must have happened to the third dragon, right. which means that they're vulnerable. Yes, right. She but then you said the same thing that Jamie's saying. For all we know, it's guarding something else. Right. Well, it's, it's not con totally conclusive. You don't. So I think like Cersei, you think like Jamie. Yes. And that's yeah. why you're going to lose a hand. All right, that's fine. And Otherwise... I will lose my head. <laughs> you will, and you will wear a tiara until someone chops your head off. Oh, well, I absolutely would. Yeah. I uh, and, and much like Jamie, I have gray in my beard, and I'm handsome, and I'm um, I don't know, I'm a good cook. <laughs> right? yeah, never, he could fry an egg in his hand. I bet he's a good cook. Yeah, he leaves it out in the sun. Uh, he seems like a sense, his finger off. He's a sensitive lover. You can tell, mm -hmm. just like me. Whenever I bang my sister in the tower while we're on vacation, visiting business associates. <laughs> um, no sisters, everybody. I only bang my brother. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so the dragons. Okay, we have something better. We have the Iron Bank. That's right. They've got money, which mm -hmm. is what the Lannisters have always been all about. Which is what Tywin always taught them about, which he didn't listen to because he, being Jamie, mm -hmm. always liked to go out and hunt and do all his other stuff, all his other boyhood, yep. you know, feats of strength and chivalry and all that crap. But yes. she was in there listening to the business side of the company. Getting good at it all. 20,000 men, master. horses, elephants, which... We haven't seen a good elephant in a war fight. Yeah, we have. Since... We've seen mammoths, which is better than elephants. Well, we haven't seen them, like... Well, I was okay. Fine. Okay. There was the, the mammoths were the ones that that pulled the gate down of the wall. Yeah, but they didn't show the elephant charging through a bunch of fucking small guys, and we haven't seen that since Lord of the Rings. Remember the elephants with the uh, roar, with the with the horns and the yeah, tusks. But we have seen mammoths in war. They've shown up in this show, but we haven't seen them in a real fight. They just pulled on a gate. Big deal. That's a it was a cool scene. I know I enjoyed it, but compared to like, I want to see them running through men, knocking over horses and stuff. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. So I'm not. I'm not disagreeing at all. The elephant. We certainly had mammoths in the show. Thank you for clarifying that. Jesus Christ, hanging out with Reddit over here. <laughs> all right. Um. Is it? <laughs> Thanks for laughing at that because I was afraid it would be coming no. off a little aggressive and, and insulting. You know. No. All right. So how is the mercenary coming in? That's okay. So okay. This is the big reveal too. Here. This is yeah. the first to. 
Euron going, I'm running away, I'm scared. Uh, and it turns out, no, he was in cahoots with queen with the queen here. And uh, she's like, yeah, he's not giving up that easy, nor would I let him leave. It was planned all along. And he is going to pick up the army and bring them back. He's going to get the Golden Company from Essos. Yeah, he's going to ferry the Golden Company back here. So Jamie, and then this pisses off Jamie because he was, she did it without telling him. He's the commander of their armies. And, and she counters, saying, well, you also plotted against me with uh, Tyrion, who was the one that brought about the death of our entire family. Right. Right. This is she holds it against him that he met without her consent, which is true, you know, but he, you know, I don't know, I think he he he's got more of a case than she does as far as who's who pulled the worst crime. Yeah, yeah. I don't not that it's that big a deal, what whatever it is. So but she does kinda of lock him in. Like that is a definition of conspiracy. You did it without in secret without you know, so I get it. I get where she's coming from too. Um anyway, they said wing, what would you call it? Well, Jamie, Treason. Yeah, Jamie's saying, I intend to honor the pledge that you made to Daenerys and to the Northmen. I'm going to march north into the north, and I'm going to fight alongside them, because that is what honor dictates that I do. Right. But the Mountain has different th different ideas, because he's an extension of her will. She doesn't even have to give him commands. <laughs> and I told you, no one walks away from me, so the Mountain blocks his way. And uh, this is a little weird. This, this played oddly. I didn't know if I read it wrong or something. Mm -hmm. So Jamie basically says, all right. You're going to kill me? Then have him kill me right now. And then she, like, looks at him. She nods. And she gives, like, a nod. Like, kind of like a, as, as the, like, they do all the time to, like, the guards. Like, oh, they just, like, turn their head and then the guards know what to do. Like, you see that all the time in shows and movies and stuff, especially mm -hmm. this one. And, uh, but and when the she, mountain even reached for a sword and yeah, he, unsheathed it a little bit, I think. Yeah, he kind of withdraws a sword, a hair. Which, so you're like, oh, man, is Jamie going to run or fight or what? I, I think Jamie could outrun the mountain, honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, just... It would be a pretty funny scene. Though. Smack him in the hand. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> running. Yeah. The mountain is lumbering after him. <laughs> He's, like, knocking over stuff. Um, but then Jamie just walks by the mountain. And then nothing. And says, I don't believe you. He called her bluff. Yeah. So, basically, she... Just was bluffing. I guess it's that simple. I don't know why I'm trying to make it more complicated. Which means that the mountain can reason. Maybe she said, I'm going to try and scare him no matter what I say. Don't bring I, harm to him. I don't think the mountain did any reasoning here. I think he's dialed into her willpower. I don't know in like a magical way, but like she, I don't know. I mean, in an almost, almost in a literal way, but it's not literal. Does that make sense? You got what I'm saying, James? Yeah. You're saying she's using an app to control him? Yeah, basically. She's got, like, mind control, but it's more like he is sort of like a, an attack dog. Like, like, like horses are very intuitive. Have or, you ever ridden a horse? I, yes. used to, I I work at a horse barn. Like, they're really fucking intuitive about where your head's looking, and, like, they kind of know what you want. And that's why when you are when you suck at horseback riding, you're, you don't have confidence. The horses get all freaked out because mm -hmm. they, they want you to feel confident. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe she glances back at her phone, and she's, like, vigorously tapping on, and it says your mountain at home is not responding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just not where you guys. <laughs> she's got to update the app before yeah. they, she can get them back to it. So, I don't know. I, I just think that it was just a straight-up bluff, but it was her bluffing, and the mountain mm -hmm. just didn't move because... Any any further movement would have been I don't know. She could have had the mountain go like oh oh like like hold his hand up to his mouth and then like reach out and gent tenderly and then pull his hand back and cover his mouth. Like what if the mountain did like you know like put his the back of his hand up against his head and and went oh well I never but the, it's the mountain doing all that so that's why it's a visual yes. joke. Yes, <laughs> try to describe it. So that people could, could pick it up on it. James, you feel uncomfortable? You look, your, your body language is telling me. What? <laughs> Nothing. I'm fine. <laughs> okay, so Jamie walks off. There's a, there, there she is. She's glaring at him. Oh, my brother. I'm going to fuck him later. I'll really show him who's Well, she boss. doesn't need to. She's already got a baby growing inside of her. Yeah. The fourth child. Yeah, but it's okay. You can still have sex with pregnant people. Why not? Well, she doesn't really need him in order no, to prolong the Lannister bloodline. Yeah, but and she even says that to an effect. He's like, you need me. And she was like, no, I already have the future ruler of Westeros within me. All right, fine. Jesus. I've only ever had sex for fun, not for this fucking baby business. I had one pregnancy scare with one girl once, and it, was, uh, it wasn't it was super close, but it was just uh, it was pretty stressful. It was really bad. Did you call her and tell her it was all okay, that your test came back negative? Oh, okay. Wait, what? Were you making a pun? <laughs> Did I, did I miss it? No, I'm we glad were that both... you were the one getting pregnant. Oh, yeah. Oh, my test came back. Yeah, I was peeing on test strips for, for days. Yeah. I don't think I'm pregnant. Why are you telling me I'm pregnant? <laughs> she, was just, she, she was fucking with me. It wasn't quite. Yeah, it was fine. It's right. That's why, you know, always just don't, don't. 
Pull it out. Pull out it. Pull out, boys. All right, so next shot. Uh, oh, there she is. She's standing there, and then we get to some trees. <laughs> so we have Jamie going for a ride, and I notice he's missing his armor. Yeah, it's almost as though he's on the trail. He's packed for a long ride, so it's almost as though he is... What's the word? <laughs> um, I keep, UPS. Uh, no, uh, uh, he is defecting. For some reason, my brain that, just kept telling me he is defecating. Defecating. It's like, no, he is defecting from the Lannister Kingsguard, and he's going north because he has a moral quandary with what Cersei is doing. Okay, you think this rises to defection? I think it does. Okay. She accused him of treason if he were to do it, but it seems like he's doing it. And then he seems to be running off on his own. Yeah, I, I, would, I would probably go along with that, I think. Um, I mean, he could make up some sort of story, like, I'm um, serving family business. No one really gets to tell him what to do except for his girlfriend slash mm -hmm. sister slash queen. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, he probably can figure out a way to come back from that, too, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There he is looking messy-haired, handsome guy. He's got his hand put in his... Yeah, it was funny how he awkwardly put his glove on. It's got, like, a big rip down the it's side. It's like it needs a glove. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe it's for grip or maybe just to prevent people from noticing him. Yeah, maybe. actually, that's, that's a good reason to wear a glove if you're him. He's, I mean, he's a he's a recognizable face because he's basically a celeb, but yeah. he would be like if Tom Cruise had a had a golden foot, mm -hmm. which for all we know is fucking Scientology. Maybe he does. Uh, all right. So anyway, what's he looking at? He's looking around, seeing stuff. <laughs> he's just off. Basically, off he goes into the wilderness. The significance of it was that he is riding away from King's Landing, and a snowflake landed on this glove, signifying that winter has come to That's King's right. Landing. Yes. Fuck. How did I miss that? Yeah. There's a snowflake. Yeah, it's right. It's snowing here. Um, so yeah, so winter is moving further south. And you know it's in King's Landing because that's Dragon's Pit. The Dragon's Pit, that's right, with the goat skulls, although yes. maybe it's a dragon skull. Um, could be the food they fed the dragons yep. or something. And or... there's another better shot of it with the snow yep. falling. That's the Cersei Bowl. Okay, so then we have uh, at King's Landing. We just got some nighttime shots and stuff. People think sort of a st snow falling here. Mm -hmm. It's like when it snows in Georgia and they all fucking have car accidents because they don't know how to drive in the snow. Um, and the Lannisters were always considered to be a southern army, and that King's Landing was in what was considered to be the south, and winter has extended all the way down there now. Right, right. And here it is. And this is very symbolic, though, too, just this, mm -hmm. the, the continental map being snowed upon in King's mm -hmm. Landing. <laughs> this winter is here, in case you didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, George R. R. Martin with that fucking on-the-nose symbolism. Well, what, what does House Stark have to do now? I mean, they have to change their slogan. It's like, winter is coming. It's like, yeah, we know it's their slogan, but it's kind of inappropriate right now. Yeah. Winter's it, here now. So now their new slogan is, told you so. Yeah. <laughs> Winter will be gone soon. Yeah. Everybody calm down. Sign your waivers. <laughs> um, all right. So yeah, there it goes. There's King's Landing. We got some lights and stuff. Everybody's out doing their thing. People are poor. Some people are rich. Uh, it's a typical city. Okay, good. So uh, back to Winterfell. Look who it is. It's my favorite. It's Sam. It's uh, James's favorite. Yeah. Sorry, I called you Sam there, James. I get you guys confused because you're both so smart and handsome. <laughs> Gilly. Love Gilly. I fucking Gilly. love Gilly. I like her innocence. I like how sweet and charming she is. I find her very winning. I like her. Mm -hmm. She's. A, I feel like she has a good soul and a good heart. Mm -hmm. Just like you, James. <laughs> Mega inbred. Um, inbred? Oh, yeah. Mega cool. inbred. Yeah, big time inbred. That sounds like, like, like one of the Optimus Prime. Optimus inbred. <laughs> Mega inbred. <laughs> why, why can't I? Why do I have to wear glasses? I'm a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> Protect the all inbred spark. <laughs> it's got, but he's just like he's got... Like defects, de defects, defects. Who calls? It? Okay, whatever. Right. He so, can just transform into her sister, yeah. into, her, into her brother. <laughs> this is Bran warging into a wolf pelt. No, mm -hmm. he's not. He's actually wearing one. Um, Samuel Tarly. So Remember? this is a reunion of sorts. They've yeah. not seen each other for quite a while. Right. Right. Um, uh, you helped us. And, you know, Bran remembers them, and and Sam's like, oh, I didn't think you'd remember me. Because oh, yeah. they had a brief interaction. Mm -hmm. They help them get underneath the wall through one of those tunnel things or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You're a good man. Well, I think, yeah, this is such a nice little moment here. I actually like seeing these guys come back. And he goes, oh, so what happened to you? Since we were going to I became the three-eyed raven. It's like, and, yeah, and it's not creepy at all. <laughs> Sam's like, oh. It's like, That's amazing, I, but I, I, I don't right. know what that means. It's like when you meet your parents' friends, but one of their kids turns out to be goth or something. Mm -hmm. And you're like, uh, i got to act like that's normal. Come on, come on, knock it off. Um Oh, okay. Oh, really? Oh, you're in a you're in a uh, you're in a band that's all kazoos. Sounds great. Yeah, can't wait to listen to the CD, honk. Um. So uh, anyway, he doesn't really know what he's talking about, but he explains he can see things happen in the past. And so yeah. So he basically had a mushroom trip that went yes. went awry, and his brain's all fried now. Um. So yeah, they're uh, they're here to have a little. Um. Yeah, that's what he's back for. What I don't know. Is there more to it, James? What am I missing here? 
Well, he says that he's come to help John, and then uh, Bran says John is heading back to Winterfell right now. He goes, oh, did you see that in a vision? And there's a comical moment where he, say, he just basically holds up the Raven message and says, no, I didn't hear it in a vision. I read it. It's yeah. sent here. Damn, I missed that. Fuck. All right. But no if you go knows. back, if you go back, let me be like 16 shots real well, quick. Well, you can see it. Yeah, you can see him holding the message yeah. as Samwell enters the room. Yeah. Right, right there. Yeah, right there it is. But he does hold it up like, no. I uh, just yeah. because I can see everything, just because I'm now an omnipotent creature. Yeah, uh, he's not a master of his power yet. Wait, is it omnipotent or omniscience? Omniscient. Well, omnipotent means all powerful. Omniscient means all seen. Yeah, so he's omniscient. Um, oh yeah, I skipped ahead too far. Uh, he says John okay, needs to know truth. the truth about himself. There's something near that no one knows but me, mm -hmm. and uh, we all know it though, yeah. James. And I actually. Yeah, so John isn't, uh, he's actually the son of Rhaegar and his aunt Lyanna Stark, Ned Stark's sister. Which is kind of funny because these are the two people in the entire world who have two separate pieces of information, which are meaningless mostly by themselves, but when combined, makes a big revelation. Well, especially this next bit here that, that Sam then throws out there. Right, that's the second piece of information, Snow. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dornish bastards are named Sand. That's kind of funny that they do that. There's mm -hmm. snow and sand and stuff uh, at the Citadel. So then this is Sam saying, and now this is kind of a throwaway line when he was he was sort of frustrated and kind of pissed off and Gilly pointed out that this annoying right. thing happened. Right, and it almost seemed as though he wasn't listening. Yeah, it did seem like he didn't really yeah. pay attention. Like, we are like, oh no, did he miss that? So he didn't. He actually, this is this, that information that the, the marriage to Elia was annulled. And they, they were read in a secret ceremony. I don't know. Some, somebody got a marriage annulled, and then they're in a secret ceremony. And then he goes, yeah, it's in his private diary. Why would he write that? Which means that Robert's Rebellion was built on a lie, that, that Lyanna was not kidnapped. She was not raped. She was not held against her will in the tower. She was actually married to Rigor. Right. So Rigor. then Bran puts on his walking legs and goes for a little visit down into the tree. And uh, look what he sees. He sees the marriage happening here between uh, Rhaegar and a uh, mm -hmm. good casting choice. They got yeah, but is this the first brighter. time we've seen Rhaegar Targaryen? I think so. Yeah. yeah that looks it looks like, very yeah. similar to Viserys, of course, because, yeah. you know. Yeah, you got the guy face and the, the, the hair and, uh, the you know. Guy face. Um, there's, uh, that's Lyanna. Looks like a Stark. Yeah, hair dark, color, yeah. Dark hair, Stark looking. Looks like Sean Bean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Robert, look at this nice little moment here. They Then they had a threesome. They, they That's the priest. That's how they pay him. Mm. Oh, priest, put it in me, bum. He's got one of those very pointy bald heads. Uh, that's a little bit of a hair tuft going on. But yeah, yeah. I, yeah, unlike me, most people's bald heads are fucking terrible. My mom had a giant cervix, so something went right. Mine is perfect. I look like a science classroom skeleton. It, it is nice. Mannequins get jealous of my perfect bald head. It is pretty, pretty fucking spectacular. Um, but no, his is, yeah, yeah. Some people, a lot of, a lot of bald dudes, a lot of, a lot of their heads look like Civil War bowls. Um, what? <laughs> you know, all dented and stuff. Oh, um, okay. All right, Rhaegar didn't kidnap her or my aunt or rape her. Uh, they had love, right? They sure. were kissing, they were touching noses. This is what you call touching tips. Touching foreheads, touching lips. It's nice. It's real nice. Boy, I could go for some intimacy right now, James. I just, uh, just desperate for it, to be honest. Um, all right, there they go. John, who is that? That's um, that is John, John knocking upon the sigil door of the Targaryen, Very going symbolic. into Daenerys's room on the ship. He is a Targaryen. He has no idea. He does and he not is know it. Entering the chamber of of the greatest living Targaryen. Mm -hmm. Right now. So while this revelation is being unfolded mm -hmm. for the audience, or nice. not, not just for the audience, but this revelation that Bran is realizing, it is cutting to an interaction between Daenerys and Jon, yeah. which is inappropriate in the context of this revelation, but it's not something they know. Well, but then again... Because they're because they're related, right? But that oh, yeah. that's not a big issue in the context of the show because she was originally betrothed to her own brother. Yeah. You know, royalty often... Incest was not that big a deal well, as, you, as it is for us today. What are you going to do? Fucking hook up with a poor? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. you got to bang somebody at your own class, okay? Someone you can trust, like your right. sis brother. Sis. Yeah, so let's see where this goes. But they got nice lighting, you know, they're looking pretty good. Looks like they've had a nice, you know, they're both in their evening uh, mm -hmm. evening wear. She's all uh, dressed and, you know, got the braids and stuff. And All right, so he walks in and the... Tyrion has a glass to the door. Yeah. He's just listening. <laughs> Tyrion's sketching out a little <laughs> flip book. Um, so we, we, we pretty much know what's going on down in that. What the fuck is that? Why, what, <laughs> what the hell is that? It's this wood. What? Wood? It's the bed. What is that? What it's, are... it's the bloody wood where Liana is giving birth to John. 
Huh? Is it a sheet maybe, or is it a piece? Of, maybe it's a sheet, but it's it's the flashback, isn't it? Where Lyanna is giving birth to, oh, and she is, says his oh, true name is Aegon. John and, I thought this was John and da Daenerys. I no. like, oh my god, <laughs> they really went for it. I, usually she's just... talking to Ned Stark in the Tower of, <laughs> okay, of so Joy. That's, yeah, this is so... <laughs> so whose name? This is their name, the baby, though. I'm assuming that's John's true name. That's named after... The original founder of the Targaryen. Yeah, they, so he's they want him to be like a Captain Aegon. Yeah. Yeah. It got Aegon on his face. Mm. Um... So Bran's sitting there watching it all go down. <laughs> yeah, okay. So that's that's like placenta juices and stuff. Yeah. That's okay, fair enough. All right. Um Oh my god. Oh jeez. Now we cut back to what's going on here in cap in the incest boat here, which I'm I think America joined the rest of the world. We all joined together in cheers and applause for this beautiful, lovely interaction because they're both about the same level of attractiveness. Always mm -hmm. nice when that happens. And this is not what it appears at all. What? What does it appear to you? They are they are simply checking each other's for fleas and ticks. Yes, they're looking for uh, for Lyme disease. Yeah, that's how this works. And he, look, he's got a great man butt. Look at this guy. Wouldn't you? I wish I had that body. Sometimes I see those Under Armour mannequins, I get jealous and stuff. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, they're having a little fun time there. You know, putting it in and, and uh, moving it around, and uh, you know, till till he beats the boss, and then they're good. They have a nice time. I applaud. Mm -hmm. Are you for or against? Yeah, it's kind of weird how she speaks in Bran's voice here, though. Yeah. He's never been a bastard. <laughs> She's got this. But it's, it's creepy that this revelation is coming in a moment where we see the actual incest occurring. Yeah, yeah. Well, one man's incest is another man's. What are you saying? That he, <clears throat> this is John Targaryen or Aegon Targaryen. Right, right. This is, he's the heir she, to the Iron Throne. She goes, oh, it's just like my brother's. You think she, uh, do you think she would give up the Iron Throne to him knowing this revelation? Do you think she would allow this relationship to continue? See, the way the culture and the world is sort of prioritizes men over women, right. which isn't fair. But I think John will like pull that back and be like, no, I just found out she's the boss. Everybody listen to her. But he's going to be like right there with her, like King Philip mm -hmm. to Queen Elizabeth, but, mm -hmm. but a little more active than King Philip. That guy just fucking went and just, you know, checked out cow testicles and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? Sure. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> well, he's got, he's the true heir then. More yes, than she he, is. Yes, he would be. But at what point Being older, they learn this would right. be interesting. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, no, I think she gets to wear the crown, I think, in this case. But yeah. Tyrion knows what's going on. He knows what's, he, he's been around a lot, sex a lot more than probably most people. So he's, he can smell it, sniff it. So those are just the same thing. Uh, hear it. Bop sense it. it. Twist it. Burlington Coat Factory. I don't know. <laughs> We're a... more than great coats. Yeah. <laughs> so then we have a, a boat. We had a thing here. Uh, by the way, I pointed this out, and I'm sure I'm going to get it wrong here, but I know that red light, it does not travel well at, in the dark. It is one of the harder lights to see, or colors to see at night, and I think they did a little brightening on this cloak thing, because it would not be that easy. Maybe it would be. I don't know. Maybe there's just light there. Because like, like, for instance, nocturnal fish are often red colored, because mm -hmm. that's the most difficult. It, 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 it looks black in low light. Mm -hmm. Compared to other wavelengths, yeah, we, we, we we don't have your eyes tested. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll go with you. Sure. And when was the last time you actually did have your eyes tested? Uh, Mom was about six months ago. You had your eyes tested six months ago? Yeah. And you all the time? Really? That's how I know I'm twenty twenty as of right now. Oh no, it's been uh, over about eight years. Oh my god. Yeah. I need new glasses. I can't afford anything. I have no health insurance, that and I can't sucks. afford to get new glasses. Yeah, I'll give you That's my why insurance that... card, and you can pretend to be me. I'll go. I'll go over there and go. Oh, I think I can't see the ring. <sighs> you weren't even looking at the right ring. Moving on. Both of them were equally visible. No, the here the, the fact that you thought it was the other ring tells me that you couldn't even perceive the other ring. So no, the not. truth comes out. That's bullshit. I saw the other ring. I just assumed that was the one because that one was slightly blurrier. The other one had a little bit more definition. Because because that one was much easier to see. Yeah, the dark one had more definition. It stood out. Okay. Yeah. So and we see the, the, a ship but in your, the ocean. Your fucking uh, the viewing angle thing is nonsense because we're, we're we're sitting in front of a thirty four inch television or, or this is not a monitor television. that's that's an ultra wide resolution. It's nice and wide, and our heads are at the same distance roughly to the screen. It, so viewing that that's no, that, I can that, see that, it much better BS. when I moved over that way. That's nonsense. BS on that one. No, that's um, true. Hardcore BS because nope. you're well within the. Uh, the viewing angle of this giant monitor, which ha IPS panels do have good side viewing angles. It does go away slightly, but 
All right, so here we go. All right, glad we brought that back up. That's great. Um, but I would go get my assessor with you if you wanted to. That would be nice. Yeah, you should. It'd be a nice time. Oh yeah, no, I, I totally. I, I neglect my health all the time. I don't have any fucking insurance, and I'm fucking poor. So yeah, well, of course, I'm. I'm just waiting to choke to death because I'm single. All right, so um, <laughs> that's how single people die. They choke to death. That's the way it works. No one's around to go. Oh no. Oh, hi, Mike. You know, here it is. That's why I want to get married so that when I finally choke, I'll have someone watch me choke to death. I'd like to choke around a person named Heimlich. Yes, yes, yeah. An yeah. Angry German. How annoying would it be to be the guy that uh, died that he so that he could figure that out? Yeah. <laughs> uh, ooh, you know, next time I'm gonna try something. <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> all right, sorry, sorry. All right, okay. Are you all right? So now sisters. I think we're back, James. We yes. got the sisters. So yeah. they're no longer adversarial to one another. Right. They're talking about defeating Littlefinger. Mm -hmm. And then yep. how, even to the very end, in his own twisted way, it seems as though he did love her, but just not in a great way. Yeah, uh, in a manipulative, selfish, narcissistic way, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't really... Yeah, yeah. So, but they're, they're saying nice things to each other. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry yeah. you had to survive. Yeah, but I'd be tough for... They're basically doing... Uh, we both have really suffered here, and uh, now they're... Um, this has felt good, though. They did actually a good job conveying the tension. Like, it did yeah. feel when Arya was being all creepy, walking around with her hands behind her back, like some mm -hmm. kind of demon murderer uh that there was a, a lot of unease going on and it, just in this scene here alone i felt like they they're uh, the band is back together so to mm -hmm. speak i felt good about it yeah it's nice see look at a little soft yeah so then they start quoting their dad right isn't that what they're doing yes when the snows fall the lone wolf dies and the white winds blow the which wolf. is symbolic of Arya returning to her pack instead of choosing to go to king's landing as the lone wolf to be the lone that's right that's right. And, and again, then, like Nymeria, refusing to become the lone wolf by leaving her pack to travel with Arya back to Winterfell, but instead choosing to stay with her wolf with pack. Her, with her pack there, yeah. Although, I, I hope we see Nymeria. That'd be fun. She mm -hmm. shows up at a key moment and slaughters a bunch of dudes with her wolves. So, yeah, the camera uh, tilts up, moves up, whatever. There's the weirwood tree. we got the leaves. And they were, they were saying fond things about Ned Stark, their father, who they miss terribly. I'm pretty sure this is where Bran was pushed. I think this is where he saw Cersei and Jaime banging. Could be. I think that's it. It looks quite... Uh, that was their Tower of Joy. Yes, it was. More like Tower of... Oi! Mm, my back! Mm -hmm. um, all right. Good, good, good one, Hank. All right. So leaves are red. Oh, no. It's red. Bran's here at the router. This is his favorite place. He loves mm -hmm. being here. Um... I just want to put... It. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, never mind. Um, Bran is warging, doing a little uh, internet, right? Mm -hmm. He's dialed up. He's got a 9600 baud modem. <laughs> he's, yep. he's on. He's spying at Eastwatch. And he's watching Titanic. This is the part where Jack and... We should do this for Titanic, James. Do you want to do it tonight? Yeah, no. Um, so we were thinking that it would be super easy to just walk around this. This is going to mm -hmm. come up later a little bit. But, but that wouldn't be spectacular I didn't, enough. I didn't know there were these big old cliffs and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that actually changes things a little bit. But anyway, I have kind of a cool shot here flying up over Eastwatch. I got a little fire going on. I got all kinds of stuff. The, the birds are flying around. That's Bran. Bran is checking things out, just making sure shit is where it's supposed to be. Uh, crows or ravens are landing. There's Beric and Tormund checking, looking, doing their, their job here on, on Hoth. Mm -hmm. This looks like I could see Princess Leia run around. This is <laughs> one of the same areas it looked like that Daenerys was standing when she was lamenting the loss of Jon mm -hmm. and of her dragon when she saw Jon riding in on horseback. Yep, that long... On, yeah. on uh, I was going to say Long John's horse, but on Benjen's yeah. horse. On short Benjen's horse. Yep. Um, it's a long way down. Oh boy, don't oh, look out. So they're all freaked out about the, the uh, distance. And then, uh-oh, we've got company. We this. see... On a is horse, we know trouble. it's a White Walker, because Whites do not ride horses. That's right, and he's carrying a spear, And but you also start to see these other fellows coming out of the woods. Yep. Um, and this is the first time they've ever been this close to the wall. This is the onslaught that has been foreshadowed for a very many long yep. number and of episodes. Tormund is thinking, oh, Brian, my love, I need you now. Hey, hey, hey. No, but he's actually freaked out a little bit. Yeah. So uh, there they come. This is trouble. This it means they're here. And he is terrified of these things because that little mark on his forehead was given to him by a white. He was almost dragged beneath the frozen oh, yeah. waters of the lake and almost killed by them were he not saved. Yep, he got this one playing hockey. Yep. Um, so, rumbling. And they are out in force. There's a lot more where, where that came from. Rawr, uh, uh, brains, uh, livers. Um, they're walking up. They got their weapons. Cool horse. I always like a good horse skull. Those are always fun. Uh you know that's that's cool. I think everybody appreciates that. Like, the, there's the guy. There's like an assistant manager at a whirly ball place. There they go. And this is we're starting to ramp up the tension here a little bit. James is starting to get a little like, oh no. So what did you think was going to happen? 
Uh, I was thinking... Oh, the Giants are so cool. Yeah, the whole time this was happening, I was saying, okay, well, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? The invasion. Well, not the invasion, the big oh. it, based on the last episode, the oh. ending of the episode. It's like, oh, we when know we they've got a dragon. Yeah, we, we know, know Viserion was turned. Yeah. When are we going to see it? Yeah, they've, they've got an army, they've got giants, they've got a dragon, maybe well, there's a mammoth in there What I didn't somewhere. know, though, I, it could have gone one of two ways. I, I, I thought that either the Night King was going to be warging into the dragon, mm -hmm. controlling it like a, a white, or less likely he'd be riding it. Right. Because that'd be too cool. So there we go, we finally see the dragon flying. He's, uh, they, they freak out a little bit, they go, oh shit, oh god, no. Oh. And, uh, what the fuck? Did I miss? Did it fly right by? Yeah, we okay. see it's got holes in its wings and everything. Yeah. So even though it's only been dead for a short period of time, it's already sort of taken on this like pi ghost pirate ship type sails yeah. for wings, yeah. which is very foreboding. And it did have a uh, wow! Look at that tail! Wow, man, that'll that'll hurt. That'll hurt. That'll kill a lot of flies. Mm -hmm. It did have kind of a stilted. It didn't seem to have a fluid motion. I mean, it all happened pretty quickly, so it's a little hard to tell. But I just thought the effect was great. I just and then there he is. Yeah, the of course he's riding it, which ah, is great. I've always wanted to be an Uber driver. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lyft driver. Um, so there he goes. <laughs> the dragon's got the blue eyes. And then we were thinking, what's the fire going to be like? Is it going to be blue fire? Is it going to be ice breath? Right. What's it going to be? Like it seems weird if it's heat, if it's like flames, yeah. and so it sets stuff on fire. It seems like it should be the opposite of fire, which is ice. Which, or, how do you shoot ice, though? Or it could gonna, just be, like, a shoot. magical blast or something. Because if you're talking right. about magic, this is obviously going to be magic. He's pretty, he's powered by magic. Yeah, so I was thinking blue fire. I would have been very surprised to see orange. But I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if it would freeze stuff or set it on fire. But uh, I didn't think quite all the way through because it turns out to be... Go ahead. I was, I was expecting pure confetti. <laughs> yeah. Honk! Uh, <laughs> magical blast, pretty much. I mean, it's sort of like a plasma stream, no, kind a, of a purple A big wooden blue. pole with a flag that says bang. It just comes out of its mouth. <laughs> yeah. It's just like soft serve ice cream. It dribbles <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, but this, it's unclear as to whether this is actually fire, or if this is like, you called it plasma, almost. I, I mean, I just, it's like... Whether it's, it's hot or cold, all we do know for sure is that it has a devastating impact. Yeah, it's super... It kinetic. tears right through the wall. Yeah, it rips through the wall. It sort of burns up these dudes. Burns, maybe. But, like, they don't really catch on fire, but it's all ice and melted water, so it's kind of hard to say exactly. But there he is up there, calm as ever. Look at this guy. No mm -hmm. no reaction. Just what a boring dad that would be. Don't you hate those dads that never mm -hmm. react to anything? It's like, come on, man. What the fuck? Can't have a little fun with the kids. Would you run around? Get on the jumping... Get on the... All right, so uh, there it is. Boom! And this is the other side. This is Eastwatch, and it is just blasting its way completely through the wall. So right. this wall is nothing. I mean, it's, it's Like you said, it's showing it's not just simply tearing away one layer of the wall. It's going completely through it. Through the wall. I mean, is this stronger than the other dragons? I would imagine it is. Because, like, could they do this to, like, a, a, a stone wall versus a giant glass? I guess a, that remains to be glass, seen. Uh, ice wall. So yeah, but anyway, so this is big trouble. This is so all these guys in the East Watch are starting to collapse. These things are falling. We never see Tormund, right? I don't think well, we, we ever... saw him running down the the yeah. ramparts or whatever him, you want to call them. Yeah, we saw him panicking a little bit earlier, but that's a great shot right there. That is pretty classic. This, this answers the age old question: How do they traverse beyond the wall? Mm -hmm. This is how mm -hmm. they do it. I think we sort of predicted, kind of hoping a little bit that it wouldn't be this. Not that I thought, you know, but that they would walk around it yeah. using frozen footsteps mm -hmm. but or the i thought at the very before this happened maybe the dragon freezes stuff and he freezes the sea so that they yeah. can go all the way around it or now, something can like you that. go back two shots of course so this guy right here looks like he is very recently deceased was he one of the ones that was killed in the prior episode you think maybe it looks like matthew modine if he gained a little weight mm -hmm. uh yeah it could be these guys yeah look at all these faces here oh there's aragorn Air, right there yeah the reindeer <laughs> There's one one. No, I don't know. No, that's and not two one. two behind him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's that's uh, that's that one guy who's a pundit, whatever his name is. I don't yeah. can't think. The guy of from right Pawn now. Stores, right there. Yeah, yeah. The fact that yeah, the, the the bald guy. Yeah, there's another bald guy. Okay, great. Lots of baldies. He's got the same armor as the one that they had captured. Yeah, he does. Uh, that's pretty cool. All right. I love the giants though. The giant wargs. You think Bran's gonna warg into the giants or the dragon? I would hope the dragon. I would hope that he would be able to overcome the possession of the dragon and fling the Night King off of it. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be fun. pretty cool. I think it'd be fun to be he takes both dragons and plays Rock'em Sock'em robots. Uh, or he or, wait, wait, I said dragons. I meant, I meant giants. Oh. And then he uses the two giants to like grab the dragon and then tear his legs off. Do you think he would maybe warg into uh, Rhaegor? I keep that dragon's name wrong all the time. And then fight Viserion? 
Could be. Through yeah. the dragon? Yeah. That's very possible. Uh, we'll see. I hope he wargs into Cersei and then just commands the Lannisters <laughs> to give up. All right. So uh, <laughs> That would be amazing. <laughs> Why not? That Can would make a people? lot of sense. Although they, they're, just like, they're not supposed to do people. That's like a Hodor, like well, fried I mean, his brain or something. Or yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so there he is. There's everybody's grumpy. So very, dad. very cool ending to the episode here. Mm-hmm. We, we got a we got a big collapse. There's wall. Tormund again. Tormund's running, so we got, good to see he's still alive. Everybody wants him to make it. Rawr! And you were saying at the time, is like, why isn't it shooting at the base of the wall? And and, and the answer is obviously, we kind of work his way crumbles. down a little, yeah. and it sort of forms a big pile. Although the way they, yeah. So anyway, yeah, they shoot him through through the thing, and there it starts to fall. The structure starts to give out. Yeah, he's probably broken the spell. I mean, there's some you know, sort of the brand because there's some spells in this wall yeah. built in by Brand the Builder or whatever. And there's a lot of uh, you know and problems here goes. because we know Dragonfire can't melt steel beams. What is that? Nine Eleven? Yes. Is it, yeah, I know. All right. Every time people say nine eleven was an inside job, I'm like, hey, it looked like it happened outside. I don't know all the what? videos you're watching. Uh, wow, <laughs> that I had not heard yet. I figure it's been long enough. That but where's can't... the pile? Why is it so smooth? Did the dragon melt it? Maybe that's why. I guess you could come up with some sort of explanation. Why, why isn't this like a full pile? Like, should they have to climb up and over it a little bit, like a bunch of ants? Yeah, I mean, they I, could totally make it over a pile. I, I know, I see that. All right, fine. That yeah. is a little convenient. Yeah, like of all things, like make a fucking pile. They could get over the pile. It's almost like it was a Minecraft wall and they just destroyed the block. <laughs> yeah, it just went away. It's just no longer. All right, so there they are. They're coming through. They're looking cool. Everybody's uh, having a great time. Oh, look at all these bones he's wearing. Yeah, look at his face. <laughs> oh, yeah, his face too. It's not Speaking of wearing bones. Um, wow, that's fun. Uh, all right, so giants are going to be awesome. I love the giants. I think I like them more than the dragons. I got to be mm. honest. They're just so cool. I, I want to ask them if they play basketball. Um, I think the Giants are a football team. Could be. That's true. Uh, all right. So there there they go. Rawr! I honestly thought that was going to be the ending shot when yeah, the dragon opens yeah. his mouth and flies into the camera and then it's boom, credits. And then we have this shot here. The dragons have entered the south, which is the north. Just like John. Just like John. Right. They are. There are many whites. They are a, a flood and they are going to take over and destroy. So made a terrible joke. Black screen. Mystics. And John entered the South. Daenerys is South. Oh yeah, well done. Yeah, Ooh. he he finally he finally took a look at her protected wetlands. Ew. Um, all right. You so made it uh, worse. <laughs> I know. I'll never. I will always make it worse. <laughs> it's, it's the only thing I'm confident in is my mm. ability to make things worse. <laughs> um, so yeah, there they go. The dragons are there, and Winterfell or the Westeros, I should say, or as James calls it, Incestoros, mm -hmm. has a very difficult time ahead now that the whites are south of the wall i think it says a lot about the next season it's going to be a pretty exciting mm -hmm. final season it fucking better yep. be so the the armies of cersei lannister is going to pseudo unite with daenerys and with the northern forces to fight the common enemy all the while plotting against them still trying to maintain power across westeros yeah okay. so that'll be interesting uh lord baelish littlefinger is now gone which is sad but you know it's well, he was a great character not sad for me he was a piece of shit yeah he was an interesting character no, he no. wove a lot of interesting storylines he was very important he was uh, he was a powerful figure for yeah. a very long time you know, he's going back to being the mayor of baltimore yeah, yeah. i know the wires so. yeah that's right <laughs> so <laughs> or in the uh, scorch trials so his absence means though that the north will be a little more united in a way like the, they're all gonna fall behind the starks because it looks yeah. like the Vale are still loyal to the, yeah. the starks i mean defeating littlefinger brought about like a rite of passage for Arya and sansa right. it, was, it was sort of like them coming into their own and you know we didn't say this i, I didn't it didn't occur to me maybe it occurred to you but it's important that they did it publicly because it kept the veil on their side as yeah. opposed to like just killing him privately, then it would have looked like they just murdered their right. their boss or something. So they, they had to do it publicly. But uh, so yeah, so season seven wrapped up. We did it. Got to the end. You want to say anything? No. Final thoughts? I, 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 I think I want uh, your parents or Jesus or somebody or hey, coach. My coach told me. Uh, Nobody ever believed in me until my coach. No. Coach Jesus. I only ever had one coach in high school and he was a good dude. What sport? <laughs> the academic bowl. Academic bowl. That's fine. My brother was in the math team, and I was the captain of the chess team. Okay. Yeah. I was literally captain of the chess team. Mm. I wouldn't lie to you about that. Who the fuck would make that up? Uh, I was number three. We had a guy who was really good. It was amazing. Um, but, um, all right, so 
what do you, what do we? I feel like we're at the end here. We've like we reached a long journey. I feel like Lewis and Clark staring at the Pacific Ocean, start, waiting for start, a boner to start go. Start playing away. season eight. Go season eight. Here we go. Next bit. No, I wish. Well, so when is season eight? Never. Twenty nineteen or twenty eighteen. <sighs> Probably 2019. Fuck! I don't know. I haven't looked it up. But So what do we know is going to absolutely happen in Season 8? We know Cersei Lannister, from the prophecy of the Wood Witch, he's going to have to die. I oh, still okay. think it's going to be Jaime Lannister that kills her, because the prophecy says that her younger brother has to kill her. She's always assumed that the younger brother was going to be Tyrion, not that it was going to be her younger twin brother, Jaime. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we know that the Night King is going to have to be defeated. Mm-hmm. We know Jon is most likely going to be the one to do it. We know that Samwell Tarly and John and all the big characters are going to be fighting in this battle at the very end. We know Samwell's got the, the, the Valyrian steel sword. We know John does too. So I suspect we'll see Samwell take down at least one White Walker. But we know we're probably going to lose a lot of people. I don't see Jorah Mormont making it through this as I'd much be, as I like him. I'd be surprised if Samwell took... I think he'd give the sword to someone else who's a better fighter. It's possible. That's, yeah. that's more his move than him going out there and fighting. No, he, he did give it to Gilly. <laughs> yeah, he gives it to that Casper the Friendly Ghost baby that they've got. Yep. Uh, keep going, though. You're making... You're doing... Well, no, uh, I mean, what else has to happen? Do you think another dragon's going to die? Do you well, think... Uh, John's Drogon? identity has to be revealed to other people. Right. So and, that's going to create... And then it's going to cut to uh, John and um, <laughs> Daenerys just throwing up into the snow. Oh, because they realized they were... Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think once but you I re- bang, I think once you, if, I think it's not incest if you don't know. And then once, of course it is. It's, and then, it's genetic. Well, this, this happens where like a bunch of kids are like the same family, and then um, I remember hearing this story in Illinois somewhere. The uh, the children, their parents died, so they all became orphans. It was like ten mm-hmm. of them, and then they got spread spread apart in the community, like within a you know a few like not not the same town, but it turned out that two of them, a brother and a sister, ended up dating. They didn't know they were raised in separate families. Because they were split up when they were very young, and like one or two of them dated, like it, it kept they kept like accidentally kind of banging. Or yeah, something. but honestly, not knowing does not negate the fact that it's incest. It's still genetically, biologically incest. It doesn't negate the genetics factor, but it, it, well, no, it, the, but it negates the, the it negates the emotional inc- thing. Yeah. Well, right, the intent is not incest. I'm but... gonna fuck my mom. Yeah, it's, it's totally like... different than like, hey, I found this hot older lady, and she looks a little bit like me a little bit, but that's fine. Right. I'm gonna bang her. And but incest seems... is the act of copulating with one of genetic similarities yeah. to yourself. Yeah, when you're talking about animal husbandry, but we're talking. Yeah. There's also the cultural thing there that if you, if you bang in your cousin and you don't know she's your cousin and then all of a sudden you find out you're like well i guess um you know i guess you can donate blood to me now honey yeah you produce a child from there i mean hey, from a scientific child? standpoint if someone says was this child conceived of incest to be like no because we didn't know no i'm not suggesting like, yeah, that. it was that's not what i'm saying at all I'm talking about the emotional and cultural factors not the genetic thing but you were saying it's in a way it's not incest it's what you started off with yeah which i wholeheartedly disagree with yeah it's not incest emotionally and culturally if you don't know. You have to know it going in. High five. I'm fucking my sister. That's incest. Hey, this girl, who, you know, same height, same kind of skin. <laughs> kind of skin. It's weird when people look like their sisters and brothers, isn't it? Isn't it fucked up? I mean, it's sort of like saying, though, that this person found this, like, white powder outside and he starts snorting it. He doesn't know what it is, but it makes him feel good. It's like, and then he wants more of it over and over is like oh no it's not he's not a drug addict because he doesn't know what it is it's like yeah you, you kind of are that's that's that's, 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 that's fucking nonsense it's kind of not exactly at all the same I'm... thing it's saying that you're not kind guilty. of exactly literally not at all close it's pretty much exactly the same thing it's saying that someone is not guilty of a certain action because they are not cognitively aware of what they're doing what does guilt have to do with anything john and john and uh uh danny are not committing incest in their brains because they don't know they're related. Once they find out they're related, then they can ha- they're free to have a, a change their emotional uh, response. In fact, my prediction is they're going to find out. It'll probably weird them out a little bit, but then well, they're going to go right back to it because they're perfect for each other, and I think they should have cute babies. Yeah, but it, the thing is, I, I think you're trying to equate incest as being a state of mind when it's not. Incest is not at all what it is. I'm not. You're oversimplifying. There's a genetic factor that's undeniable that if they mm-hmm. do reproduce and their baby has uh, tentacles, but let's be honest, they'll be really strong, handsome tentacles or strong, willful and powerful. Uh, that's incest. But if you don't know, that's all I'm saying is if you if, you're, if you don't know you're screwing your sister, it still is. You're not you're committing. Not aware of it. You're not committing the sin, the same sin as someone who does know. If we're going to use the word sin, I don't believe in sin. I think sin is fucking nonsense, but. It's not the same thing if it's someone who does know. You can't tell me that's wrong. 
No, I mean, it's different, but it's still Thank incest. You. Sure, yeah, I agree. Okay. So, yeah, it's still, it's still incest, but it's not like, oh, look at those two sinners. They yeah, don't I mean, know. I mean, just saying that I didn't know doesn't change the genetics of it. I agree with that. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> not my fault I have better but emotional in- intelligence than you. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. You ever heard that phrase, emotional intelligence? No. Well, I used to write clickbait professionally, James. Okay, so I think I know something about emotional intelligence. How to manipulate people using words. That's why the okay. fucking headlines on this channel suck because I, I hate writing clickbait, so I don't bother with good clickbait. Really? I don't do clickbait, other than the Twin Peaks one with the butt. But yeah. I don't do anywhere near what I used to do. There have been so many times where I've like waited, it's like, oh, cool, this video is going to come out. Then I'll look at it, and this is like a picture of a cleavage or a butt or something. Like, come on. I did, no, in Twin Peaks, Twice. I did the butt once, I did shoes once. I think you did. I'll find two examples. I know that there was at least twice. Well, my point is, compared to uh, the clickbait I used to write for the oh, young, for the Young Turks, I do. I used to be. I used to write clickbait. I used to write headlines for the Young Turks. Everybody. I think well, it was. So, um, what? I think it was Westworld. You did it for. That's what I was thinking. Of. Yeah. No. I mean, certainly. I, yeah. It's not been zero. But I'm saying my point is, I don't. It's it's painful being being a soulless merchant of of online manipulation. So it's hard. But, yeah. Where I was going yeah. with the whole incest thing, though, is I yeah. think it will result in a child because the whole thing was that Daenerys could not get pregnant. Right. And I think that that was... Okay, go ahead. Go going, ahead. I think that's going to be disproven because now she is... And you want to get into, like, what John really is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually brings up somebody in the comments. I forget the name. Damn it. I'm sorry. I, I, I really appreciate your your your, uh, your comment. Pointed out that John was a fire white. And, and that's because he was risen from the dead by the Lord of Light. Therefore... His he, his constitution isn't the same as a person. It's whatever particular, and I, I'm elaborating what the person said because it's a fairly short comment, but and it makes sense in a way to think that John's not really a person in the way like you know like and, and as a means of explaining why he was able to survive being underwater and then climbing out and being so cold. I think that's a plausible uh, something that's worth it's very interesting worth exploring uh, because. He does. We don't know anything about people who are brought back from the dead by the Lord of the Light. Maybe there's an entirely different mo for a white that's brought back by those guys versus these Night King fuckfaces. Yeah, I think the whole surviving the frozen water was just sloppy riding and trying to accelerate the pace faster than it needed to be. So I, I think it's an interesting theory. It's not one that I personally think is the case, but it's it's but interesting. Maybe there's something to him having fire, being a fire white. And that she cannot be burned. And she can't be burned. So she's all a fire baby. So yeah, it, is, it won't burn her. So, but she uh, she obviously has um, deep magical connections to fire, like you just said. And so maybe down there in the baby chamber, they'll be like, ba-doo, ba-doo, ba-doo. Has ever been like a little, like it'll wake up her, whatever's barren about her, because he's got the fucking magic now, flaming if she sperm. Had, if she had put her ear to his chest and said, I don't even hear a heartbeat, maybe I, I'd be more on board with that. Well, here's my thing. We're, we're talking about supernatural, so it's all fucking nonsense. So yeah. whatever, you don't need a heartbeat at well, all. Well, if you're a white, then you're not a living creature. That might. How do you know the fire whites don't have a heartbeat? Maybe because a, the very definition of the word white is like a reanimated corpse. It doesn't is not alive. How white do you know? is an actual term. I play a lot of fantasy games and stuff, and the zombies are often called white. Oh, so suddenly we're 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 we're, we're judging this like it's the Olympics. No, it, it, it is a fantasy term. It's, it's a creature that is well established. Yeah, but you don't you don't know all that about the Lord of Light. That's a religion. Well, I'm now saying we're mixing. That, we're, we're no, mixing, no, no, I'm saying that it's you make choose, them up and religion. I'll mix together. If you choose to use the word white, as in W I G H T, okay, then I think that you need to accept the mythology that goes along with that. I disagree. I think this is a separate ecosystem of mythologies created by George R. R. Martin that has all kinds of vagaries built into it to leave things open to interpretation. But he, he's he's kept with the the mythology of dragons. He's kept with the mythology of zombies. He's kept with the mythologies of pre-established things all the way. He hasn't really broken much new ground so whatsoever so in terms of that. So the word matters more than the actual thing. Maybe we we'll call it. Uh, we won't call it a white. Maybe there's some other word. Yeah, if you call him something else. So sure. he's risen by something else. Yeah, he's he's a. I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know. White works for me. I like it. Yeah, I mean, W-I-G-H-T. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just be interesting. If you were to go to, like, uh, some dictionary, what is the definition of white? I'd be interested. Let's see. Let's find out. I mean, you could do it on screen, too, so they can read it. Fuck that. Hey, Siri. Hey, um, for Game of Thrones, what's the definition of white? We're doing a video here. How do you, Siri? Shh. Checking my sources. Okay. Ah. I found this on the web for yeah for Game of Thrones. What's the definition of white? Who do I video here? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you're using Siri. Who is? She didn't. 
Game of Man, there's some videos. What's a white? Hope these are the butter flavoring to your popcorn. <laughs> she put up some movie. I don't want fucking movies. Siri, enough. All right, quit fucking around. Tell me what a white is. Ooh. Oh, so you just well, swearing. You just look it up. Just swearing. <laughs> All right, fine. We'll look it up. Oh, a person of a specified kind, especially when regarded as unfortunate. James, I'm a white. A spirit, a ghost, or other supernatural being. A spirit and ghost being things that aren't alive. So that, that kind of works. They all have heartbeats. Spirits and ghosts don't have heartbeats. Game of Thrones Wikipedia. White is a reanimated corpse, either human or animal, hey. raised from death by the White Walker sect. As their minions, whites are often referred to collectively as enemy the dead or simply as the dead. The dead. Yeah. All right, fine. By the way, you're, you're arguing here about whether or not he has a heartbeat. Which has nothing to do with anything. We don't know if anybody's noticed his new heartbeat or not. Well, I'm saying that if you want to call him a white specifically, yeah. if that were revealed, then I would be much more on board with the idea of him being a different kind of white. All right. So you're hung up on the word. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I would not think of him as a fire white at all. I, I can see he's undeniably a creature, still a human, I would say, but he has been reanimated. He has been given new life by the Lord of Light. All right. So, of course, he's a person who what is brought a, back so from why, the dead. Why, not, why can't fire white have different set of characteristics? Because John's not dead. What is, a, what is an apple? A fruit? What is a pine tree? A tree? What is a pineapple? That's a fucking evil, weird, strange... It's a compound See? word. Exactly. That... Compound word. Thank you. Fire white. Compound word. Two words That's with space no. between them. Which is not a compound word <clears throat> at all. It's a com yeah, sure it is. You can have compound words with one with a space. You have that, what's a hot that... dog? Hot dog's not. There's a space there. It's a one word. No, there's not. Hot H O T space D O G. Then that's a dog that is overheating. A hot dog is all well, one You're word. You're saying there's no. Is that true? Yeah. Hot yeah. dog is one word. It's a compound word. So go to like dictionary.com. Hot dog, space, hot dog, space. Also spelled hot dog. Okay, on Wikipedia. <laughs> and that's the true one. Yeah. Oh, the true one is the one that they mention with their hand okay. up to their mouth? Okay, well, look oh, at, okay. Well, well, let's get to the crux of your argument. Look up what I a don't know what the argument is. You're arguing that a compound word can have a space in it. I'm saying absolutely not. I'm saying not. that, no, I'm not, maybe not specifically compound word. I'm saying that, what you said. that we can have two word single nouns. Well, just look up compound words. So. All right, fine. I'll let you be right on this. I don't really don't. It doesn't matter to me. This is, I don't know why. This is just all more editing for me to do later. And it's already fucking 10, 21 p.m. Yeah, two words joined together. Create a new meaning. Right. You can use a hyphen. Okay. It can still be a compound word, but a space yeah. negates it being a compound word. Sure. Fair enough. Totally okay with that. But there are two word, not single nouns, like hot dog, like, uh, the, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Open compound word. But I'm just saying that what you call something matters. Like, you can't call that a compound word, just like you can't call John a white. All right, Reddit, calm down. All right, <laughs> here we go. We're we're back. At, okay, guys, thanks for watching. Anything else to say? No. Uh, great season, great episode. It's a, a little bit rushed, but it's I understand because we only have one season left. They have to kind of get events in motion more quickly. Yeah. It creates moments that are a little bit less likely, the compression of time. But, you know, I, I'd love to have 10 more seasons of it, but I know the only one more exists, so... I'm glad that uh, we can get. Daenerys is now involved in politics on Westeros, because that's been a promise that's been f uh, finally fulfilled that's gone on for, what, three or four, five, six, six seven seasons or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. So it's good to see that that's finally happening. And uh, I can't wait for more great special effects, because HBO has a great budget, I'm assuming. And especially for the eighth season, they better, they better not... Yeah, it seems like this cheap. season, they did not leave any of the special effects budget on the floor. They did a lot of special effects, since I'm expecting quite a bit more, especially with all the violence and stuff. Do you think we'll end on a positive note when it's all said and done, or like it'll be like Sansa? I think dying we have to because I was expecting Littlefinger to be the the one left standing, and now that's oh. thrown out the window. <laughs> okay, all right, that's cool. <laughs> it's like that. There's you're. I didn't know you were such a fan of Littlefinger. It doesn't change anything. No, I, I as a person, he's a terrible human being, but yeah. I I appreciated his tenacity and his ability to manipulate and his ability to survive despite not being a strong physical character that right. he got he knew how to play the game well he was a conniving conniver yeah all right well speaking of conniving give us a patreon a little thought there <laughs> we that's, that's still not even set up but maybe it, this will be set up by the time uh, some people watch this uh, i just am too overwhelmed with the rest of us or but anyway like and subscribe uh we appreciate anybody for sticking around we also understand if you don't want to stay subscribed after this is over we're going to put up video game stuff and other things but uh, if you do stay subscribed, that helps us grow larger. Ultimately, we would love to get to a much larger audience so that we could do this and 
have more content and put out more videos and stuff and not get distracted with work or not be devastated by a fucking airbag theft, shit like that. Um, oh, we need to check on that. Uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, maybe I do, should go. Yeah, I got my car back. An airbag got stolen. I've had it back for three days. And now I'm nervous it's stolen again because they stole it from our garage. You should put the address up of where it's parked. Yeah, here's my address, everybody. Uh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> here's instructions on how to remove an airbag There's from a Prius. It's crazy easy to remove, too. Um, so that's probably not good. You should have gotten the barbed wire model. I thought about putting razor blades inside the panels. <laughs> You Honestly. just put razor blades inside the airbag the, so that when you do use it... Well, no, it, no, it's on the side. It, know, it'd be on the side mounting mechanism, and it's nowhere near the actual device. Then you basically just have no airbag, and you have a stranger's blood all over your car. Or I'd shoot razors into my face. That's what I meant yeah. by putting inside your airbag. Yeah, I know. Well, why would I do that? I would put them near the, the panel parts where you take off the side of the steering column. I'm not going to do that. That's obviously crazy. But, I would uh, just get the, the low jack. Not the low jack. The, 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 the club. The club. club. Yeah. Well, I... Yeah, maybe. I'll see. I gotta do some research. But all right, whatever. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching and liking and being part of our community here. We love everybody. Keep stay stick around. Or if you do unsubscribe, come back and check us out around Game of Thrones time next season. If that's all you're here for, we are going to do more shows though, and we've done a bunch of shows already. Uh, that's all we got though, James. Thanks for putting up with me. No, yeah. I feel like I get under your skin sometimes, but you're too nice. You want, I want but I want you should just punch me. Just punch me. Just fucking punch me. Do it. You ever punch? You want to punch me? No, I really don't want you to. <laughs> I would feel pretty upset. If I, I would did. break my hand. I would feel pretty bad. I'd be like, oh man, what did he? I'm such a baby. Uh, good night, everybody. Bye, James. I love you.